lads, welcome back everyone, welcome back to another week, another edition of the Sparkling Tunic Up number 44. I'm of course your Sly VIP, and with me I'm joined by these amazing players, by these lovely people in the chat. And we have our first series, we have our first matchup ready for us. It's going to be a ZVP. And spawning in the top left hand corner of Site Delta, we have our Ukrainian Protoss player. The yellow Protoss representing himself, currently teamless, it is Night Phoenix. And spawning in the bottom right hand corner, we have as a partner, we have the Costa Rican Zerg player, the the purple Zerg representing Team LTK. It is Eon. Here we go. Now, I do apologize if I sound a little bit different here today, but I have been a little bit unwell. I have been a little bit sick, have been a little bit under the weather as of late. Basically, ever since returning from Australia, I've been just a little bit... Yeah, I, I think I had the flu. Just have the flu even. I'm recovering. I'm recovering. I'm getting better. Uh, but I'm still in the process of recovering. As a result, we were going to have a back-to-back -back broadcast. We were going, we we're going for a cannon. Oh, my God. Uh, we have a forge. Sorry, we have a gate first. No forge, by the way. Okay, it's going to be a fake cannon rush, but Eon does not know. He doesn't know. He pulls the boys. Big reaction and overreaction here out of Eon pulling. What is that? Eight drones? Ay, ay, ay. Yeah, eight workers force off the mineral line and Night Phoenix he backs off. We go back to mining and that is a big delay already here for the Zerg player. So a very good start here for Night Phoenix again. Forcing an overreaction behind this just to gate expand into the cyber core. Getting into his standard opener. But uh, what I was going to say is that we were going to be casting Sparkly Tunic Cup leading into, uh, leading into Stars War 11, the European final day of the closed qualifier. Uh, we were going to, but again, um, I don't really feel too up to the task. I think I'm just going to be sticking to just the Sparkling Tunic Cup. And then afterwards, we're going to be getting some rest, getting some veg. And I'll try to catch up with the closed qualifier of EU at a later time. I will try to catch up later on down the line and set in a couple of days once I recover. Uh, once we're good, man. Once we're good. Until then, we're settling in. And oh my god, we're going for a Twilight Council opener. Okay. Okay, here we go. So we do have a Twilight Council opener on the way here from Night Phoenix. That should be leading into Glaives, maybe into DTs, Dark Shrine, one or the other. We'll see how aggressive we want to be with this. Again, we already had a very beautiful start here for Night Phoenix. The third base has been heavily delayed. The drone is poised to take that third. We do delay it for quite some time with the pylon. Adept has arrived as well, but we do miss the drone. Third base is going to be taken on location. Night Phoenix does threaten the shade. Again, keeping an eye on the saturation. Another gateway going to be thrown down. It's going to be two gates. Now going to be interesting. Two gates into a robo. We have pulled out a, we have pulled out of the gas. Glaives. We have pulled out of gas, which means Glaive Adepts is going to be on the way here for Night Phoenix. So four gate Glaives should be on the horizon. It is not all in. It is a, you know, a bit of a committed, aggressive start, but it leads into a third. It does lead you into a third base. You do macro out of it. But this may be able to pop off because of how much damage has been dealt. Again, we've already lost so much mining time here from the side of Eon. And we could lose even more than that. As, even more than that. As two more drones go down. Aye, aye, aye. Two workers do fall. We do shade the hell away. Just barely. And we do have link speed at least. So we can help chase all this down. We're going for a lair first. Very fast lair here from Eon. Sub four minute layer, by the way, that is very suspect. We could be looking to go for a Link Queen Nidus all in, uh, or maybe even drop a Lord Harass. I'm feeling some kind of aggression here with this very fast layer. Unfortunately, I don't know if we can really make use of the fast layer. As again, we're going into Glaive Adepts, the links they do get across the map, they do delay the third base, getting a kill on the pylon. Very nicely done. Very nicely done. I see in the chat, oh, we're all sick together, Papi. I got the flu too these last days. Easy feel. I see Teddy trip in the chat. Flu for me too. Sucks. Oh my. At this, what's what's going on? <laughs> all the ducks are all getting infected. Oh no. <laughs> but I hope you all the best. I wish you all the best. I mean, again, um, the flu it was the worst yesterday. Yesterday I was feeling really, really rough. But uh, today I feel a lot better. Um, and again, hopefully tomorrow I should be recovered by tomorrow or the next couple of days. Should be okay. Should be okay. 
as adepts are going to be getting across the map. We do have plenty of links here to keep up. But we can use the terrain against this army. And we do commit to the shade. Night Phoenix does shade in. That's a lot of links, though. Yeah, massive amount of links. They come in for the surround. We will clean up every single adept. Good target firing here at a Night Phoenix. Five drones go down, but we lose every single adept. I spoke too soon. We go for a big warp in. We go for another warp in, and we get a couple more adepts here into the main base. We shade towards the natural. Good target firing. Eight drones go down. And once again, really good positioning here behind the mineral line, denying any kind of surface area and denying any kind of mining as well. And we keep going. We just keep on going because did I say four gate glaive adepts? No, it was six gate. Six gate glaive adepts. That much more committed here at an I Phoenix. That much more aggressive. A shading into the main base, getting more drone kills. Decent juggling here at a knife and he's preserving those adepts. Keeping them alive, keeping them safe and sound. We do manage to barely slip away, but that is going to be another three drone kills. More lost mining time. Lings are going down. And there are no roaches. Uh, there's, there has not been a roach warren or a bailing nest. It's been pure ling. Again, with the fast layer, I'm pretty sure we were planning to go for a Nidus or Dropper Lords. We were planning for some kind of all in. Alas, it is not paying off. Not anymore. This is game ending damage. Eon is down to 28 drones. And the, the adepts, they're going to go handle these things. There's just not enough links, not enough firepower. Another big warping into the main base, and there's nothing left. There's three queens. We, we do snipe the prism. Impressive, but there it is. GG gets called. Nine Phoenix takes game number one. GG. GG, well played. A solid game one there at a night, Phoenix. Eon, unfortunately, on the back foot, on the back foot from the beginning, did just kind of misread the situation. Was uh, again baited and faked out with the cannon rush, which was a rough start. Led into a delayed third base, so much lost mining time, and it led into the six gate glaive adepts, which hit like a truck. And it was unfortunate that. Eon happened to be going for a fast lair into a very delayed Roach Warren. I mean, there was no Roach Warren at all, no Baneliness at all with pure Ling Queen. That's a, that's a tough defense. That's an nigh impossible defense there. And with that, Night Phoenix takes game one. Takes game number one, but now we're getting into game number two. Lamina. Oh, fam, got it. No, baby, no. Not like this. It's okay. We'll, we'll all get better together. It's all good. But here we go. We're getting into game number two. And spawning in the top left-hand corner, we have... Oh, my God. We have our Ukrainian Protoss player. The yellow Protoss leading the series 1-0. to zero. It is Night Phoenix. And spawning in the bottom right-hand corner, we have as a player, we have... Ooh, going for a 13-12. We have the Costa Rican Zerg player. That is 13-12 here from our purple Zerg representing team. License to kill LTK. It is Eon. Now, this isn't just a 13 gas. This isn't just a 12 pool. This is also a proxy hatch. As a drone is zooming across the map as we speak, it's might most likely to throw down that hatchery across the map as well. So Eon is going completely all in. And Night Phoenix, can we hold? Can we defend? Right after this series, I'm going to get a cup of tea. I'm going to <laughs> oh, the stacking drones. Oh, my God. I didn't even notice, but the drones, they were stacked. And the probe is going to be denied. And so far, so good. The goal here, the purpose is to deny the wall. To make sure that the wall is wide open and the lings are able to flood on in. As lings are going to be in production momentarily. Boys are being pulled. Taking this very seriously. A lot of damage being dealt here. A bit of an overreaction out of Night Phoenix. Is walling off though, and that is a two gate opener. Ooh. Two gate opener to Night Phoenix did not scout across the map, but reading this so well. Looking for the hatcheries, denying the workers as all we take the gas. We go for the gas still in the main. Drone applying some pressure. Lings are going to be flooding from across the map. But we have our first zealots. Ooh, that is a supply block, I believe. Yeah, that is a brutal supply block for a couple of moments. Looks like we are waiting for the cyber core to get into a depth production. There it is. Is that proxy hatch or the hatch block here in the natural? And here come those links. 
here comes link speed as well now what's important is that we have stayed in gas oh okay never mind i was gonna say that we've stayed in gas which means we could go into a bailing nest but we have pulled we have since pulled out of gas just flooding into across the map we do force a cancel here on the cc or on the nexus nexus hatchery there you go we got there we do force a cancel so far clean defense here at night phoenix cancels the base forces back the lings clean some of them up Again, a very well rehearsed game so far here out of Night Phoenix. Lings, they do try to slip in. It looks like the wall is not a wall. And the wall was not a wall. We do get a kill on one of those deaths. So we have plenty more adepts on the way. Can we wall off? Oh, we can. We can wall off. From here, the gas did finish. Hatchery is still on the way. Hatchery still on the way here as we are gonna be as we are gonna be settling in and uh, Night Phoenix is just expanding elsewhere, just taking that third base instead. Gonna be taking the third, setting on up. Uh, shading on back. And we can see Eon, he's still not transitioning, by the way. Uh, I'm like waiting for the moment when he drones. I'm waiting for the moment when we can finally see some droning, but no, Eon, he's still making lings. Hasn't done much with it, and I, it's it's looking a little bit bleak. It's looking a little bit bleak here for Eon as he's being outscaled in this game. Night Phoenix with double the worker counts, getting his natural base of running. Twilight Council's on the way for some tech, for some upgrades. War upgrade about to finish up. We are supply blocked, though. We are supply blocked. Eon, he could pop off. Uh, he could. As the hatchery is going to be going down. It's getting low. The queen may be able to pop out just in time. And we're going to be mainlining main over. Lings are amassing. Looks like we deal with the lings in the main. Do we have a shield battery? We do not. No shield battery. That is going to be a kill on the hatchery. Again, a really disjointed attack here from Eon. He's spreading creep. Warp gate has completed. Creep is denied. And Night Phoenix is going to hold. He will be able to hold on here. Dealing with this hatchery. Yeah, Glaive's going to be on the way behind this. Like, there's just not much else behind. Not much else that Eon can really do to keep up. Like, he's still just making links. Like, what else can he do, Papi? <laughs> what else can be done? I don't even think we need Glaives, to be honest. Even van vanilla adepts across the map would be too much to handle, but we're just securing ourselves, getting into glaives, getting into two more gateways. I appreciate the aggression here from Eon trying to catch Night Phoenix off guard, but so far Night Phoenix's response has been beautiful. Just two gateways into fully walling off, denying the denying the hatchery, and not overextending, just preparing back at home to deal with any kind of counter attack. deal with any kind of push and yeah Eon still just rallying links across the map doing what he can praying here to maybe get a good surround I mean there is a possibility there is a big possibility here speaking of and up say shade away we're getting on top of the shield battery we force a recall oh and that is gonna force Eon out the first recall is forced or well, the recall is gonna be forced out now it's on cooldown Eon gonna threaten another, threaten another dive. That's not gonna quite need it. Getting into the mineral line. We do it on top of some probes. Do it on top of some workers here. As I say, shade across the map. But again, there's no answer here. Uh, we were droning, but there's no answer to these adepts. Lings will do nothing. Queens will do nothing. Without roaches, without bailings, these adepts, they're going to pop off. They're going to snowball out of control. That's exactly what's happening here. As we're shading into the main, we do have a mass amount of lings. But again, what can they do? They melt before this army. A very efficient trade out of my face. Again, using the terrain here to his advantage. Creating a choke point. Leans up all the lings, GG, and Night Phoenix will take the series 2-0, advancing on to the next round. Whew. GG. Oh, hold on. There we go. And congratulations, congratulations here to Night Phoenix, and 
we didn't even get to mention and even talk about the tournament but everyone welcome welcome to the sparkling tuna cup our weekly open tournament that we host here on the cranky ducklings doesn't matter where you're from what region you are in you are welcome here at the sparkling tuna cup and again it was great to see latin america up against europe eon of course from costa rica was able to compete it is 4 a.m by the way it's 4 a.m for eon he's staying up deep deep into the night and he should soon be going to bed so thank you so much for partaking thank you so much for participating get some rest papi get some good well-earned sleep and uh yeah we're gonna be following night phoenix into the next round so a big shout out oh sorry we're just reporting some scores uh, a big shout out to uh to night phoenix for advancing on and he's gonna be waiting for his next opponent his next opponent, of course, is going to be either Nikic or Mindle VK because exclamation mark B if you guys want to have a look at the bracket. Let's go. Huh. Okay, the bracket is set up. Quite a large one here. And we have a couple of results coming in. We have Erebus taking down his opponent 2 0. We have Hon Mono taking down Rostock 2 0 as well. Oh, to apologize, it looks like we're just getting some. Uh login issues here on eu but should be able to get in eventually should be able to get in but from the top we have Geralt versus Erebus Geralt is going to be one of the favorites for the entire tournament so big shout out to Geralt uh, followed by Gogo -Go Joy versus Mia Micah in a ZVZ definitely looking forward to that as well looking forward to that ZVZ we have Nick Rack versus Azura in a Terran versus Protoss again Azura, the Italian Protoss up against Nigrax, one of the rising Terrans in EU. Winner goes up against Honmono, as Honmono is waiting already in the quarterfinals. Scrolling down, we have Hyper 1 versus Blue Knight. We do have the winner going up against Nice in the next round. We have Mixu versus Shameless in a ZVP. Night Phoenix versus Eon, which just wrapped up, and Nikic versus Mindul VK as well in a Zerg versus Protoss. We are waiting for Nikic and Mindul to wrap up to wrap up their series to finish up their game and we will follow them into night phoenix that's going to be the current plan also <clears throat> again i'm going to be resting my voice a little bit here so we're going to be going on a short break i'm going to go get some tea I'm going to go try to smooth out my vocal cords and uh yeah again i if you miss out on it i i'm a little bit under the weather i'm sick with the flu i've been coughing all day it's been lovely it's been beautiful but we'll be back in a couple of minutes with the quarterfinals See you soon.
and welcome back everyone welcome back Ooh, as we have just returned from a break and we are jumping in mid-series into our next series again welcome back to the sparkling tunic cup number 44 our weekly open tournament to all regions to all shapes to all sizes exclamation mark b in the chat as the bracket has been progressing quite a bit here we do have a lot of updates already coming in as the quarterfinals is getting underway but this is to determine who advances on to face off against night phoenix in the quarterfinals as spawning in the top right hand corner of solaris we have the red protoss player representing size from gaming it is mindle vk and spawning in the bottom left hand corner we have as a opponent we have the Blue Zerg player from the land of Belarus representing the Platinum Heroes. It is Nikic. Here we go. Now, we're here in the ace match. We're tied up one to one. I unfortunately missed out on the previous games. I don't know how this series has been unfolding, but at least we're here for the finale. We're here to find out how this story ends. Hatch gas pull opener, standard opener here out of Nikic. Nothing too crazy, nothing insane like the 1312 that we saw out of eon thankfully this time everything is looking as it should i was just blowing my nose uh, but so far everything's looking as it should again nick is he is an aggressive player in his own right but he's not the cheesiest of players he's not always all in by any means but he does thrive in the mid game that's where nick can look at his best meanwhile middle vk I feel like does similarly here, uh, looking and striving for the mid game to the mid to late game as well. I'm really curious to see how middle VK will approach Nikic here. I would say that both these players are pretty evenly matched. This could go either way. We'll see. We keep an eye on them. As the probe does confirm the expansion is going to be as annoying as possible. Tasing away at that drone, but we'll be forced back. Lings are on the way, queens are amassing as well, and we're just going to be saturating up our two bases, uh, forcing Mindle back, and we'll see what our tech of choice is going to be. We have our answer. It is not a Twilight Council. We're going for a Star Gate opener. Okay, stand the build here out of Mindle VK, which is what we expect to be seeing from our Protoss player here. Star Gate opener into Oracles, into a third base. It's from that third that, that we can see like some deviation. We can see something quite different out of Mindle. We'll see if that's the case. We will see if that is the case. As for now, Adept is going to be threatening a shade, being forced back away from that natural. Just applying as much pressure pressure as it can. Nikic is able to keep up. Able to keep up with the aggression. Ooh, and uh, my mistake. I'm going to have to eat my words. I assumed it was going to be a standard opener. I assumed it was going to be Oracle, but no. Void Ray. It's going to be a Void Ray first instead here out of middle VK. We've spoken about this recently, how this is an opener that has fallen out of fashion over the past two months. Um, this used to be very popular, like December, November, December, January. Um, but February, it feels like February and March, like this build has fallen off and the Void Ray openers have become less and less common here as we're going to be diving and dipping back into it. Now, the power of a Void Ray opener is to be able to shut down and deny scouting information and shut down and deny these overlords. With the denial of these over these overlords, Nikic is going to be in the dark as to what comes next, as to whether or not there is going to be another Stargate, a Fleet Beacon, and Sky Toss, maybe a Twilight Council, a delayed Forge, or even no Forge into Glaver Depths, a uh, third base or not. So, like, there's just so much here that Nikic is going to have to try his best to try to keep up with his vision. He's moving out of his lings, and he has not yet seen the third, but he soon should. There we go. Does confirm the third base. Behind this, there's that Twilight Council that we spoke about. I don't see a Forge. Without a Forge, this looks like Glaives. This looks like Glaive Adepts. Looks like a very committed follow-up here by Middle VK. The reason why I say this is going to be committed is because it is a Twilight Council without a Forge. Without a Forge, that means there's no upgrades. That means there's no longevity with this army. No longevity with this tech. So I'm, I'm leaning towards Glaives, but we'll see. Meanwhile, across the map, the Oracle gets in. Gets one drone kill, but takes a lot of hits to the face. Oh my god. Takes a lot of damage just to recall back home to the safety of these bases. We spoke about Glaives, and there it is. Glaives is now on the way. Again, it all makes sense here for Middle VK, and this could get a lot of damage done. Now, thankfully, Nikish throws down his Roachworn, but this is a late Roachworn. This is around a five-minute Roachworn timing here 
from Nikic. Will he have enough to defend? Will he have enough to maintain his economy to minimize his losses? Because that's going to be quite a number of adepts on the way. Because that is going to be four gates in production, six in total. Oh boy. Six in total. And usually it is a four gate glaive that follow up, but because we've gone up to six gateways, it's feeling that much more and more committed here. From the side of Middle VK. Oracles, they do slip in. They don't get much done. Ooh, one Oracle goes down. Big overextension there by Mindel. Big overextension. Meanwhile, we're going for some extra warp ins. Oh my god, that's, that's a lot of adepts. That is a lot of adepts. Here we go. Moving out with 11 adepts. Behind this, now we have a Robo and a Forge. So this is the transition. This is the next step. Plus, also we have Blink on the way. Forge and plus one. Adepts have arrived. So this is not all in Adam Mindel VK is working on the next step. But that doesn't mean that these adepts don't have to get damage done. They do. They do have to trade well. And we do threaten the shade here towards the natural and now towards the third. But there are plenty of roaches in position and Nikic, he, he loses nothing so far. And now Mindel's in a bit of trouble. Um... Now, you may be thinking, well, at least he's kept the Adepts alive. True, right? He has kept the Adepts alive. He still has them to make use of them. They can still gain value, but he needs to. The reason why he does need to is because he's so far behind everywhere else. Blink is late. Plus one is late. Robo production is late as well. Fourth base is non-existent. It's now being thrown down towards Nikic. And Nikic, he's ahead in tech. He's ahead in upgrades. Again, because Amindal went for Glaives first after the... Void Ray after the Stargate, it delayed everything else, and it means that the mid game is going to be a little bit weaker for Mino VK than it otherwise normally is. So he's going to have a weaker mid game. Still moving out with those depths, though, still trying to find a way in, and he could. Again, if Nikkej is caught out of position, we can pop off, but his army's not too far behind. Yeah, he will rotate, he will keep up. Adepts, they do threaten the shade, but we are going to be able to keep up with it. And behind this, we're taking up even further into a second Robo and into Storm. So basically, Mindle, he's so vulnerable right now. Like, he's working on the fourth base, double upgrades for double forge, Storm, and Charge. Uh, there's a lot on the way. Second Robo, a lot on the, ra on the way here for Mindle. And if he's given time, if he's given enough time, then he can recover and he can surpass his opponent. The problem is that he needs time, and the problem is that Mindel, sorry, that Nikic is about to max out. He's about to max out on Ling Bane, Roach Ravager. Bailing speed has just kicked in, and now we can move out. We can commit. We can send it. They threaten us around across the map. Oh. A couple wings will get shaved off. Yeah, not going to be committing yet, but you can see Nikki tees up almost, what, 70 supply here. Middle going for a big warp in. Storm is done. Speaking of, the first storm has been thrown down. We have one storm left. We might have been a little bit premature initially. There we go. There's that second storm. That's all we have. Bailey is a crash in the high tempo. Exposed. We forced the arc on. Yeah, we're getting into the middle line, and probes are going down. We have broken the fourth base. Yeah, the fourth base has been compromised. We just focused down the nexus as well. From here, we could even pick off that Archon. We could, and we will not. Would we'll you back off? Uh, Nick is bleeding out quite a bit here, but his opponent is supply blocked. Oof. Was supply block for a moment there. 20 probes go down. Nikic should be backing off, relying on those reinforcements. He can afford to lose the space. But he doesn't want to. He doesn't need to. As the armies clash, we go for a big counterattack. The Immortal, no! The Immortal goes down. Nikic, he busts into the main. Forces a, forces a warp in. On the front lines, middle VK backs off. Doesn't push in either. Does back off in the end here. 
And Nikki, she's already remaxed. She's already remaxed. She's on 91 drones. Arguably too many drones here for Nikki. The wall is not a wall. No. Middle doing his best hero impression. He busts into the natural base. And we're forced all in. It's all or nothing here for Mindle. And the reality is he just doesn't have much. He has borderline nothing. As he's diving on the army. Mainly they pop off. They do connect with the main force here. Of Mindle. And from here we're just kiting on back. Focusing down those zealots. I reinforce him sorry enough to clean this up. GG gets called. Nikichi snowballs out of control and he will take the series two to one. GG. GG, well played. Congratulations here to Nikich for taking the series in the end, for advancing on into the next round. My condolences to Middle VK. Unfortunately, when you go for a build like the one that Middle went for, when you risk it all, when you go for a Twilight Council into Glaive Adepts, the Glaive Adepts need to get damage done, and as we saw, there was barely any economic damage dealt whatsoever to the Zerg player. Nikich was on top of all the harassment here, whether it was a Depth Harass or a Glaive Adept Harass or any kind of attempted scout. Uh, Nikich was on it, was able to shut it down. GG, well played. Congratulations. Nikich advances on, and we have our next series. We have our next series here. You can see it on the screen. Up next is Night Phoenix versus Nikic in another PBZ. Another PBZ. And from here, I'm just going to be messaging some of the players just to make sure we're okay. Just to make sure we didn't get left behind. Beautiful. Uh, meanwhile, we have some other updates. So we may as well catch up. We may as well catch up here as we have Blue Knight taking down Hyper 1, 2 to 0. Blue Knight up against Nice in the next round. That is the final round of 16 match as every other match has concluded. We have uh, Geralt advancing on Gogo. Joey took down Mio Micah 2 to 1. Big win there for Gogo Joey. Very well done. Shout out to the Kong from Hong Kong. Shout out to Gogo Joey, the best Zerg player in all of Hong Kong. Do love to see him. Did make it through. Likewise, we do have a Nick Rack advancing on over Azura, Hon Mono over Rostock. Do have a Shameless taking down Mixu 2 to 1 as well. That went all the way to the ace match, went all the way to game three. Would have been amazing to have seen those players face off against each other. And uh, congratulations to Shameless again. Shameless, he has been on fire recently, he has been more on the rise. So, I uh, did expect him to do well, but Mixu is no slouch. So, I'm sure they had a great series. Congratulations to Shameless. And of course, we have our matchup at the end, Night Phoenix versus Nikic. Meanwhile, as we get ready here for our next series, shout out to Kashim. Oh my God, Kashim in the chat. <laughs> uh, the unsung hero of StarCraft. Thank you so much for subscribing for six months, half a year of support. Gracias, Papi Shema, Papi Shema. Thank you so much for the support. We do appreciate it. Thank you. Hope you enjoy your cracks. Hope you enjoy your emotes. Quack, puppy, quack. Now, looks like we don't actually need too long to set up here, but we're going to be going on a very short break. I say very short. I mean, oh, I just need to blow my nose. Hold on. So I do apologize if my voice sounds a little bit worn out or a little bit hoarse. I do apologize. Um, but you know, we're, we're doing our best here tonight. We're doing our best. Um, depending on how we feel tomorrow, we might skip ESL, the ESL Open Cups. I, I would prefer not to skip the ESL Open Cups, but uh, we'll see how we feel tomorrow. As well. we, may, we might take a day off just to recover. Uh, but it's ESL Open Cup Asia tomorrow. Ah! <laughs> we'll see how we feel. See how we feel. As it uh, looks like our players do need a moment to set things up, though. Vitas are underway. So we are going on a short break. When we return, Night Phoenix versus Nikic is going to be coming at you 
next. Oh boy. We go. go so yeah, we're gonna be going in a short break we'll see you momentarily here for our next series until then enjoy the break enjoy the brutal ost Welcome back everyone, welcome back. We have returned with our third match of the night with our first quarterfinals match to determine who advances on to the semi-finals. Let's go, we have a ZVP ahead of us and spawning in the bottom right hand corner of Psy Delta, we have our Ukrainian Protoss player, the Red Protoss representing himself, currently teamless, it is Night Phoenix. Hold on, I'll fix his name. I'll get there. Just have to get the color right. Bam, there we go. And spawning in the top left hand corner, we have his opponent. We have the blue Zerg player from Atlanta, Belarus, representing the Platinum Heroes. It is Nikic. Here we go. Our ZVP is upon us. Once again, Nikic going for a hatch gas pool, standard opener out of our Zerg player. Meanwhile, as we've seen from Night Phoenix, he is not the most orthodox of players. We saw him against Eon fake out of Cannon Rush and also committed to Glaive Adepts in game number two. So we'll keep an eye on this probe to see how spicy we want to be, how aggressive we want to work out here. Once again, there is that fake Cannon Rush, by the way. And I'm liking the lack of reaction here. Well, I, I say lack of reaction, two, two drones. Okay. Two drones get pulled down to low ground. As a reminder, Eon pulled eight workers. Here only two, we forced a cancel here on the pylon. So again, Nikish with a very light reaction just in case it was real. We can see that it isn't. Nikish confirms that it isn't. He goes back to mining. And Night Phoenix, he forced some inefficient mining out of his Zerg opponent. Not bad, but not the amount of damage he was looking for. Like, I'm sure he wanted a bigger reaction there from his opponent. Didn't quite get it. Behind this, we're getting into our natural base. Setting on up. Pylons on the way. Second gas is being taken as well. Second gas is being taken. And we are going to be settling in towards the mid game. Nick is making a handful of links, but I believe that's only going to be for map control. And from there, we should be joining up and head towards a third. Ooh, speaking of a third base, a third base is delayed for the Protoss. Okay, a delayed third, or I say delayed third, we have our tech of choice, not a Stargate, Twilight Council. Okay, it's going to be a Twilight Council opener here out of Night Phoenix. This looks like potentially Glaives. We'll keep an eye on the gases here, and we'll see how hard we commit. If we don't pull out a gas, this could be 6 gate Glaive Adept, or it could be a Dark Shrine opener. Right now, I'm leaning towards DTs, but we'll see what Night Phoenix has in store. He pulls out. He does pull out, which means Glaives. Glaives is going to be on the way here for our Protoss player. Gateways are on the way. Gateways are going to be on the way as we are getting across the map. We do have the Robo. That's going to be for the eventual Prism for the Harass. There's that Glaives in production, as we did mention. Quite an aggressive start here from Night Phoenix. Now, as a reminder, this is not all in. We should be expanding behind this. We should be transitioning after the initial adept aggression. But uh, this could get a lot done if Nikish doesn't respect it. 
what I'm referring to is that by the time we reach the four minute mark, around 4.30 actually, we should be throwing down a Roach Roar and we should be preparing defensively back at home, back at home. For the time being, we just have Lings and Drones. I have a look Queens. Lings, they get across the map. They do get eyes on the would-be warp gates. Two more gates on the way. That's going to be four gates in total. And we confirm the lack of third. Okay, so I was waiting for the four-minute Roach Warren. And we got a four-minute something. Four-minute Bailing Nest. Okay, so... You can defend against Glaive Nest with Ling Bane. That is true, but as you can imagine, your Bailing connections have to be on point. You have to be able to keep up with the Shades. You have to be able to connect with your Bailings. If you're unable to, then the Adept army can snowball out of control. So this is a very risky maneuver here out of Nickage. Not impossible to defend, but it is harder. It is a little bit more difficult. It is a little bit more of a risky defense here by Nickage. We'll see if he can pull it off. Behind this, we're transitioning. We spoke about how we should be leading in towards either further tech or a third base we can see no third base yet but we are taking up into a bay that'll be into colossi or disruptors if it's roach heavy most likely disruptors but we'll see and Epps, they do cancel the shade they do head towards that third their base gonna be under fire larva being focused down My nose. As we do go for the warp into the main base, queens are somewhat in position, and oh my god, the prism gets very low. A very low warp prism. And Epps, a dive on top of those queens, but we can transfuse, we can keep them alive. And so far, these Epps haven't done much damage. Again, the bailings are lying in wait. Disruptors are on the way, as we did mention. We are going for some disruptor drops. Speaking of drop play, Adepts, they do drop into the main. But so far, no major damage. And Naked, she's defended quite well. A Zerg player here has defended quite well for himself, losing two drones and only that. From here, we can re-drone. We're working towards a lair. This could lead into Muta play, into Spire tech, for example, which not which would not be a bad thing. For our Terran. Terran? For our Zerg. You can you can hear that I'm I'm losing it, but it's all good. And we are settling on, in on three bases. We have our two disruptors. My Phoenix moves out with that prism. Doesn't see the army. Otherwise, we could 100% nova these, these Ravagers. We could focus them down. Instead, we're going for a harass. And back at home, we may lose the third. We should lose the third. Here we go. Nick is collapsing on the army. Shield battery not done yet. A good force fields though out of Night Phoenix with the Bailings. They're rolling on in and they will get some good connections. Oh my god, massive connections here on the Adepts. Lings are flooding in. We have broken the third base at the same time across the map. Novas will be connecting. We get eight drones. That is good damage, but that pales in comparison to Night Phoenix losing his third. Like Nickish, he gets a lot of damage dealt. He's looking good here. As I say that, we bust it. Okay, good. I was going to say we bust into the natural, but we do have the overcharge. I will keep Nikich, sorry, Night Phoenix in this. That was going off once again. Not really getting too much damage dealt though, as the Queens do force back the drop. Nikich still on a low drone count. This is the thing that Nikich, sure, he killed the fourth base. That was good, but he was also bleeding out some units back at home. He also has a low drone count to begin with. struggling here to to kind of make this build worth his while so far hasn't been ideal but he, we have gone into disruptors and colossi and at least the disruptors are still alive at least they've been kept safe and sound somewhat i mean the prism is very low <laughs> the prism is very low but we keep it alive we cannot live to fight another day and we can get some more value here with some more novas potentially on the main army Potentially. A 
as ever goes off. Oh, uh, we grazed the lings. No big connection. We were so close, though, from getting that off. Likewise, it up, they get it into the natural. They get a couple of drone kills. Knife being skating whatever value he can and settling into Colossi back at home. A solid army composition. A solid defensive setup there by Knife Phoenix, as you can see. Nickage, he's starting to snowball out of control when it comes to the size of his army. That's a, that's a big army. He's going to be a large army here. Do you rotate around? There he goes up. Oh. We're pulling back. All right, good. Now, what's interesting here back at home is that we're building up towards four Colossi. This is something that you often do not see. Four Colossi is a bit overkill. Uh, it's quite a hefty army. Behind this, we should be getting into Disruptors, into a heavy great gateway composition as well. We have Blink, no charge yet. And even though Nikic, for the most part, isn't in too much danger, he it feels like he has been really lax on his droning. Nikic, he's barely saturated his fourth. It's up. But no drones at all, he's cutting workers at 49, and that means that Knife Phoenix technically will have the better economy. Give him a couple of seconds to finish off that Nexus, and he will have the better economy, which is a scary position for Nikic, as Nikic does clearly have to fight back. Does have to fight back here and now, sooner rather than later. As Nikic, he's about to max. And from there again, as we mentioned, is going to be on the timer. As the, the name of the game for Night Phoenix is going to be to defend. And thankfully, we are harassing. We do have disruptors still active on the map. We have adepts here towards the south. Oh, the prism. No, oh, the prism goes down. A disruptor as well. Never goes off. No connection. We shut the disruptor down. Big loss there for Night Phoenix. Ay, ay, ay. Ah, that's two disruptors falling. Adepts, they commit to the shade. We have Ling Bane. We clean this up. Again, desperation moves here out of Knife Phoenix, not paying for itself. And now, suddenly, our Zerg player is in much better control here. Hive is now on the way, so Hive Tech is delayed. Thankfully for our Protoss player. It is moving up through the center. It's pushing right through the center of tanks. Oh, they're getting set up. Tanks? What? <laughs> Colossi is what my brain was meant to say. Wait, was that a kill? Ooh, that was a kill, not a cancel. 300 minerals down the drain. Knife Phoenix pushing right through. Army supplies, army sizes are comparable. That's a lot of bailings on the way. Just now finishing up. And here we go, we try to collapse on the armor. Good force fields! Very nice force fields here. The bailings, they come in from behind. Too many bailings here from Nikic. Collapsing on the army. Connecting here with those stalkers, and we're running out of steam. Knife Phoenix running out of army. One Colossus falls, and we might even survive with three Colossi, but... Still feels like a better trade for Nikic. Yeah, takes out one of the Colossi, takes out the second. Now we're down to two, now we're down to one! One Colossus left. And soon we're going to have zero Colossi remaining here as it does get targeted down. A big win there for Nikic. And we got to keep going. Uh, the Stalk is going to be keeping his, him busy, but I guess the reality is that it takes so long to rebuild that kind of army. To be to rebuild a Robo into uh, such a Robo centric army composition. that. Knife Phoenix is going to be forced back home. The prison will escape. This time the prison will survive, thankfully.
as Ninkage with the Hive Tech, he's working towards Ultra, as we have Adrenal on the way with double expanding or taking a fifth base. Now, Night Phoenix, if we can survive, if we can hold on for a couple of, like, one minute. Give us one minute that maybe we can hold on. Bailings, oh, they get in. Seven probes go down. Not insignificant. Seven workers do full. Night Phoenix trying to recover. Prison moving out. And we'll see if Night Phoenix can survive the second wave because this second wave is going to have some ultras. Ultras are on the way now. These are going to be some squishy ultras, which is a little bit concerning. What I mean by that, yes, they will have kindness plating. Kindness plating is on the way, but they have no carapace upgrades. There's no plus one, plus two, or plus three. So the Eva Chamber upgrades here are lacking when it comes to supporting these ultras. Could be something that does factor in. Could be. We drop into a natural base once again. And pick up a couple of links here and there wherever they can. Picking up those links, Nikki, she has maxed out. So I saw plus three melee, getting into overload speed. Meanwhile, Knife Phoenix building up once again, once again up to three colossi. I would love to see immortals. Like the problem is that he hasn't seen the ultra, so he doesn't know that immortals are going to be necessary. But here we go. Nikish moving forward towards the would be fifth. We're gonna deny another base here of Destiny. Destiny? Of, of Night Phoenix. Here we go. We focus down the pylon. We have the prism coming in from behind. I don't know why, but I was thinking of future. <laughs> I saw a result actually recently. I think on Wikipedia. But here we go. We go for the drop in the main. Oh, we have a we have a spire on the way. The prism, no. The prism is going to up live somehow, some way. It does live. Does does escape. A depth's going to be focused down at the same time. We do have zealots coming in from the south. Oh, we we do actually get a couple of worker kills here towards the northern base. Is another big warping of zealots as well. My phoenix popping off. Getting a lot of damage done, pulling and dragging Nikich out of position, and now we're coming in from the south. Uh oh. We're coming in from the... Oh, we, th we thought about coming in from the south. Um, now we do have Immortals on the way. This is the one thing that I feel like we're lacking here. If we had a couple more Immortals, we could keep up with the Ultras. We could keep up. Lings, they collapse here on the Stalkers. Big peak off here. A lot of Stalkers are going to be going down. Good catch here by Nikic. The run back comes in, gets on top of the hatchery. Likewise, back across the map. Roach as they push forward. But again, where do we, where, how do we engage? That's a lot of Archons. I feel like Knife Beast, he can take a fight. Takes out another hatchery. Maintaining his control over the economy. Does get across the map. Does get into a mineral line. Drone's going to be going down. Drones are going to be going down as we focus down another Overlord. Not too bad here. From Night Phoenix. Oh, the drone! No! The drones, they come back too soon! <laughs> they, they walk into the Archons. 13, 14 drones go down. And the Ultras, they get stuck here on the Sim City or on those mineral patches at the same time. Big Roach can attack across the map. Ah, doesn't get much done. Another base falls. Nikic, he is falling apart. Night Phoenix is just pulling him left and right over and over again. Constantly in his face, we do catch an Ultra. An Ultra, a couple of Roaches. The Lings are going to be going down as well. Here come a lot of Bailings. That's a lot of Bailings, though. How many Bailings? 51. 51 Bailings, but we're out of position once again. The fourth base goes down. Nikic, he has a third, but you can see heavily oversaturated. No fourth base, no economy. Bailings, they roll in. They crash into the Colossi. Big connections here. Colossi go down. 
Again, what is the answer to these ultras? What is the answer? Where are the immortals? Oh, do we, do we make some? We have one. We have one immortal in the main base. Uh, we need more. We need so many more immortals here. How many ultras do we have? Seven. We have plus one carapace. We're moving on out. Can these ultras be focused down? Can they be stopped? There's that overcharge. We dive on the army paling. They oh, they don't quite break in. We do get on top of these archons, and the ultras are snivelling out of control. And Nikki, she's still pulling this off. Who needs an economy? Who needs any kind of bases or any kind of workers here as ultras are popping up? I spoke too soon. Two of them get targeted down again. They do not have plus three or even plus two carapace. We do kill this northern base. The game is getting very scrappy. Okay, so Nikki, she's back up to four bases. Night Phoenix, also on four. I want to favor the Protoss when it comes to the economy. When it comes to the army composition, not ideal though. As the Ultras once again, they collapse on this. GG gets called. Night Phoenix unable to pull off the, the unable to come back. Just barely unable to pull off the comeback. And Nikic will take game number one. Whew, GG. That was closer than it should have been. That was <laughs> a very close game there. Very back and forth. Again, Night Phoenix had a really hard time, uh, especially with his initial... Glaive Adept opener. If you remember, the Glaive Adepts did not do much damage whatsoever. As a result, we were able to see our Zerg player just run away with the game in the mid game. Tech up all the way into Ultras. Shut down the Adepts eventually, of course. But uh, in the end, even uh, break a base. But alas, he wasn't able. Well, he, he had a really hard time closing it out from there. Uh, we saw that Night Phoenix did go for Disruptors, the Purification, the Nova Drops weren't ideal either, no big connections, we lost the Disrupt, we lost the War Prism. There was so much working against Night Phoenix, but he still made a game out of it, which is impressive. And that tells me that I won an Ace match. I want an Ace match, I won a Game 3, but here we go, spawning in the bottom right hand corner of Hard Lead, we have our Ukrainian Protoss player, the Red Protoss. It is Night Phoenix. Spawning in the top left hand corner, we have his opponent, we have the blue Zerg player from Atlanta, Belarus, representing the Platinum Heroes, it is Ni uh, Nikic. I almost said Night Phoenix again. <laughs> uh, oh no. We're getting there. We are getting there. Also, Fanata Honmono. Uh, is Homer a VTuber now? I need to. I need to know. I need to find out. Hold on. Honmono. God damn. <laughs> no shot. Wait, what? Oh no. What? No. What is happening? Oh no. I need to. Oh no, no, what have you? <laughs> okay, um. So once again, we have. Oh, actually, we have a real cannon rush. Okay, this time it is going to be a real, not a fake out here from Night Phoenix going for a pylon, going for the cannon. I'll explain what's happening soon. Uh. <laughs> I'll explain what's happening soon here as uh, cannons are underway. Um, cannons are going to be underway. We do force a cancel. Big moment here, canceling that natural waste. Now, what's important? This is not a committed cannon rush. Now, there, are, believe it or not, there are variations of cannon rush. This was a for as this was a gate forge. Gate Forge opener. What does this mean? This means that we are building up towards an expansion. This means that we're committing very lightly to cannons, and this is only to cancel. It's only to cancel bases, only to cancel these hatcheries. We are not committing. We are transitioning out of this. We are macroing. This is a quote unquote macro cannon rush. We even cornered out the first zealot. We're across the map, and my god, we're even able to yeah, disrupt any kind of saturation, delay, force out some more links. Again, this Zelda is going to be so annoying here for Night Phoenix. Oh, God. And I 
I, I need to look away from, from the abomination that is homeowner's stream. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. Not like this. Uh, if you guys want some context here, uh, homeowner is dressed up in a maid outfit. <laughs> homeowner, he's he's dressed up in a maid outfit. Uh, uh, no. I'll... I'll post it into Discord. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's happening. I'll I'll, po I'll post it in in the tuna cup. Let's go. <laughs> As uh, from from the top there, we're gonna be able to shut down the cannon rush. Uh, I mean, eventually the cannon is gonna be forced down, or is gonna be shut down by this queen. Back at home, it's going to be a Stargate opener out of Night Phoenix. It's going to be settling down here into a two base economy. And yeah, Night Phoenix is looking pretty good. He's ahead in workers. And we even force an unnatural third base location here. Oh my god, we are so spread out. We are so spread out. I would not be opposed to Oracles to harass, but we're going for a Void Ray opener instead. We are going for the Avoid Ray Opener. And uh, with that, we can shut down uh, Scouting, shut down Vision. Honestly, this could be Sky Toss. I would not be opposed to it. Sky Toss could be on the horizon here for Night Phoenix. We'll see where he takes us after the first Void Ray. After the initial Void Ray. I, I, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just shaking my head. Hold on. I'll post it in the Twitch as well. I'll post. I'll post it in the Twitch chat. You can. You can enjoy. Uh, you can. You can enjoy it yourselves. <laughs> as we do have our second void ray in production as we speak, so we are committing into additional void rays. Again, I would not be opposed to a second Stargate and a Fleet Beacon. There it is. Second Stargate's on the way into a Fleet Beacon. The reason why I say it's a really good idea to go into Skytos is because Nick can just split up. He's spread out very thin right now very limited creep connecting the bases very limited queens available again we can abuse this we can take advantage of this so i do think it's a smart idea as we're going double stargate oh it's wait twilight council okay what did you link us <laughs> I see the chat. Hormono, one of the best players of SCC. Hormono, uh, he's an animal, by the way. He's an animal. <laughs> and I don't know why this happened. I, I'm shaking my head. <laughs> I need answers. Hyper One, answer me. We need to know whose fault this is. What has become of Hormono? As for now, we're going to be seeing a bit of harass coming in. Drone's going to be getting picked up. A couple of workers left and right here from the Void Rays are still committing to Mass Void Ray behind this. Blink is on the way as well for Night Phoenix. Rushing into Blink. So an interesting deviation again. So we're not seeing Sky Toss. We're transitioning into a Ground Toss. But before that happens, they go the Bailings. No! The Bailings, they crash in. Late reaction out of Night Phoenix. We bust through into the third base. Workers go down. A pylon shield battery as well. Can we deny the third? We cannot take down the base itself. But we do force this back. We do force this back. We do force it back. And how many void rays have we built up towards? The answer is five. Still not a death ball amount of void rays here. The queens are relatively close by. We try to focus on the hatchery, but we should be able to save it. Shows the transfuse. We don't even need it. Void rays, they have to back off. Wings, they come in for another surround on the shield battery. Probes are falling as well. A nice whole position micro there out of Nick Itch. And it looks like this may just be too much. Again, Night Phoenix, he's still building up towards these stalkers, towards plus one, but it does feel so late and. This is just a really awkward game state. I'm, I'm almost uncertain as to what to say here. 
We have a marauding amount of Void Rays that have been spotted. Queens are rotating over. They haven't killed a base yet. Likewise, Lings, they collapse on this position. They get a Stalker. Uh, likewise, the Void Rays once again, they don't get the base. They don't get the hatchery. They do get forced back. Again, these Void Rays have not been worth it so far for Night Phoenix. They've been hurting him more than they've been helping him. And with that... We do see Nikic able to tech up even further. We have the Spire on the way. Infestation with Prime Tech. We can rush into Muters. Or Corruptors. Or Corruptors here. As for now, we're just committing to Lings. Going to be harassing across the map, applying some pressure. Center base is being taken. Void Rays, once again, they do go straight for the hatchery. Can they focus down? Looks like they can. Oh, God. Uh, looks like they should be able to. No, never mind. We transfuse. We keep the base alive. Stalkers, because they come in, though. They try to come in for a flank and for a, for a yeah, kind of dive. Uh, but they won't be able to. Nikish is in position. Forces back the army. GG gets called. There's no breaking this. We fall too far behind. 19 probes go down to a bailing run by. And Nikish takes the series 2 to 0. GG. GG. Well played. Congratulations here to Nikish as, as he does advance on. Very well done. Very well played. Very impressive here. Again, I was not opposed. I was not opposed at all to how Night Phoenix was approaching that game. Going for, I mean, the cannon rush was pretty successful. The cannon rush did well for itself. The follow up going into Void Rays, I was on board with, but Void Ray into Blink Stalker is a little bit awkward. It does take a while to really get going just because you're going from one tech into a very different kind of tech switch, a very different kind of setup here with those Blink Stalkers, and it just was not worth it in the end. And we had Night Phoenix call with his pants down one too many times, especially with those banning run buys. Too much damage dealt. GG, well played. Congratulations to Nikic. Advances on to the semifinals. And we have yet to determine who faces off against him in said semis. Let's go. Let's head on over here to the rest of the brackets. Huh. Exclamation mark B. Exclamation mark B in the chat if you guys want to have a look at the back of yourselves. We are kind of nearing the more than halfway point at this point. As we can just head on over. It's going to be zooming in. You can see here that we have our top eight. We have our top eight players. Uh, we have Geralt versus Gogo Joey. Currently mid-series. I wish them both the best. That's going to be an amazing PVZ. Meanwhile, Hon Mono takes that Nick Rack 2-0. Big win there for Hon Mono. Very well done. Congratulations as he brings down Nick Rack 2 to 0. Nick Rack was last week's finalist, so that is a big win for Hon Mono. That is a big win for him as he does make it to the semis. Uh, meanwhile, we have Nice versus Shameless. Nice takes down Blue Knight. Shameless took down Mixu. They're in the middle of a PvP. Winner goes up against Nikic in the lower brackets. And of course, we have Nikic who just took down Night Phoenix. We will most likely go into a short break. Uh, we will most likely go into a break here. Oh, as I say that. Uh, it is going to be a short break as we have an update. We have a score that just came in. Nice versus Shameless has concluded and it went all the way to the ace match. It went all the way to game number three. And Nice did take down Shameless 2-1, to one, advancing on to the semifinals. Which means... We have our first semis ready. You can see it here on the screen. Nice versus Nikic. Now, as, as I said before, <clears throat> we are going to be going on a short break. We are going to be going on a short break here. And uh, we're waiting for the players to conduct their videos. When they are done, when we return, we will have the lower semis. See you soon. Take this moment to hydrate. Hydro search riches, massage your marines. I am going to be sipping on my, my tea. My uh, tea with honey in it and... Again, hopefully it does my throat well. Hopefully we're okay. As we're almost there, we have three series left. We have the lower semis, followed by the upper semis, followed by the grand finals. 
We can make it. We can make it, Bobby. We can make it. See you guys soon.
and welcome back everyone welcome back hope you enjoyed that lovely brutal osc as we have returned with the semi-finals of the sparking tune cup number 44 again this is our weekly open tournament and fun fact if you're in the chat if you want to if you want to support this event if you enjoy the sparking tuna cup if you enjoy the tuna want some more of it exclamation mark patreon patreon in the chat Macharino in the chat as well we have multiple ways to support this tournament with however you please again you don't need to support it monetarily if you don't wish to if you don't have the funds for it do not fret do not worry but if you have any spare change if you have any way that you want to support then you can do so via patreon and via Macharino. otherwise we're diving into our semi-finals the first semi-finals of the night and spawning in the top left hand corner of hard lead we have our red zerg player from the land of Belarus, representing the Platinum Heroes, it is Nikic. And spawning in the bottom right-hand corner, we have we have the Taiwanese Protoss player representing Team Little Fairy, the Blue Protoss. It is Nice. Nice. Nice, of course, being the reigning champion. He was last week's sparkling, sparkling Tuna. He was last week's Sparkling Tuna, and can he claim that title two weeks in a row? Or will he be stopped? Will he be slowed down by some of these other opponents, by our Zerg player here again, Nikic? He did very well for himself taking down Night Phoenix. Very impressive play. But now he's up against Nice. A different beast, a different Protoss. Here we go. Behind this Nice, getting into a two gate opener. Very interesting. So it's a gate expand into a second gateway. This is a delayed Cyber Core here. I should say delayed cyber core. We're, we're prioritizing um, our gateway quite heavily here, our second gateway. This should be leading into double adept. Should be leading into double adept, then into four, maybe even into six afterwards. But a very aggressive build. Zealot first on the way here by Nice, who's going to have that Zealous again. Again, of course, the adepts thereafter. And that double adept timing is going to be a brutal one. It's going to be quite terrifying and something that has to be respected. Hopefully, Nikic can keep up. Hopefully he can keep up here as he fully he scouts everything. Like Nikish, he's fully aware of the two gate opener. Is aware should be preparing back at home. Speaking of back at home, we're droning. Queens are on the way. Third hatchery now in production as well at the third base location. And as the cybercore finishes, we delay the adepts. Okay. We delay the adepts in favor of a Stargate. So the Stargate has been thrown down. Adepts will soon be on the way uh, as the probe is going to be moving out towards the left hand side. Are we taking? Okay. I was like, are we going to expand before Adepts? No, there we go. Two Adepts are on the way as we speak. Probe is long distance mining. And we'll see what we can get done. We'll see how well we can engage. Again, this was an interesting opener out of Nice. Just because it wasn't your traditional two gate opener that we would expect to be seeing. It was a gate expand. And meanwhile, with the Stargate, we're going for the Void Ray. No oracles here. Void Ray first out of Nice. We spoke about this earlier, as Night Phoenix did with this, with this, uh, with this out as well. It is a way to chase down these overlords, to deny vision, deny scouting, to keep the Zerg player in the dark, and to go for some hidden tech. Now, this could just be a standard game. It could be Nice going into Blink and plus one in a third base, or it could be Nice going into something different, like a second Stargate and Sky Toss. We have options. Third base is delayed. Is denied. Third base is delayed. Adepts are racing back home to deal with these lings. Again, remember, despite the two gate opener, nice. He is staying back at home. He skips the additional adepts as well. Taking the third base. Void Ray's in position. A very passive start here out of nice. Despite his build order of choice. And there it is. We have the answer. This was an option. Sky Toss. Fleet Beacon's on the way. Second Stargate's going to be on the way as well. And this should be either a Carrier Rush or a Tempest Rush from Nice. Before that happens, Lynx have arrived, but we have Adepts in position. We have Adepts to defend. We do force the Lynx back. There's a second Stargate as we speak. Again, this is the power of a Void Ray opener, is that you just don't know what's happening. Drone's going to get picked off. The Oracle does get three Worker Kills across the map. Roach Warren's on the way. A bit of a safety Roach Warren timing. I think this was around the 4 minute 30 mark. 
for said Roach Warren. Yeah, we're throwing down spores, we're droning up, making queens, getting ready for what's to come. And we don't know that right now, Nice is vulnerable. Right now, Nice, he is the one in danger. And soon he won't be once he gets into his carrier production. There it is. The first carrier is on the way. First carrier is on the way. At the same time, Lings, they do get across the map. There's a shield battery. There's an Adept. There's an Overcharge. We are perfectly fine. We do manage to get another Overlord. Supply blocking Nikich. Four Overlords on the way. Yeah, we're set up to deny the fourth. We have Stasis Traps. We have Void Raves. We have Oracles in position. And Nikich still doesn't know. He still doesn't know what's going on. His last scout was of the Oracle that was on the way earlier on. Infestation Pit's on the way here for Hive Tech for Vipers. But still no, still no Hydrogen, still no Spire. And the Carriers, they're amassing. The first Carrier has arrived. Now, we should be building up and hiding the Carriers as best we can. The longer this goes unscouted, the stronger this is going to be. But Nice is being very adventurous already with the first carrier. I'm not so sure if I like this. We're being very, very premature. Who cares about the surprise factor? Apparently, as we are revealing the first carrier across the map is... Oh, oh. Yeah, we're going in. Yeah, the carrier is revealed. We do focus down a tumor, which... Again, not quite worth it. How many queens do we have? We are on six queens! Only six? That is not enough, by the way. If we had waited, if we had pushed out with three carriers, we may just win the game. Oh, yeah, we have one transfuse. Uh, two. We have two transfuses here. Ah, soon to be three. But if we had committed into into six queens, mate, we could have done some damage. Now we have the Spire. Spire is now on the way behind this, plus one attack. We do have a gateway explosion. We do have a Templar Archives on the way. Sorry, a Twilight Council. Looks like charge. Does look like charge here. As it does, as the move that does trigger a counter attack. Lings and Roaches, they hit the fourth base. Carriers, they're racing back home. But it might be too little too late. So there's just too much DPS here. We force a cancel on the Nexus. Very nice big off there by Nikic. Gets a cancel. Uh, gets forced back here from in between the bases. Does get forced back. Oh. Yo, shout out to Lunacy in the chat. <laughs> Big shout out to Lunacy. Our Korean, our resident Korean Protoss player. Just leaving him a message. He, need, he needs to know what's happening with his countrymen out there. Check his Twitch. Ew, <laughs> Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> but here we go. We have Ling Roach once again hitting the right hand side. There is one carrier in position here, but one carrier doesn't have the DPS. We can just power our way through. But you have four probe kills and the gateways. Corruptors are on the way. Nice is just turtling up back at home, building up his Sky Toss. Working towards charge loss to support on the ground. I imagine Archons thereafter. Archons are kind of his missing link here. Gonna be turtling up here on these bases. Turtling up on said bases. Corruptor is gonna be rotating around. Hitting that third base. Likewise, Bailings get in! Oh my god! Bailings, they do slip on in. 15 probes go down at the same time. Corruptor, they hit that third base. They go straight for the Nexus. We do have the Overcharge, but the Overcharge not going to be enough to keep it alive. It looks like the DPS, the DPS is just too high. And we get a kill on the Nexus just like that. We obliterate a Mineral Line and we take down a Nexus. Good damage dealt here by Nikic. Crippling the economy. Tough 
does cripple the economy here and nice he needs more time he's building up a death ball of an army he has archons but only a handful he has carriers a good amount of them but naked she has a booming economy he's on 85 workers he's on four base sorry five bases now a solid income for Nikic. Hive is done. Greater Spire is on the way. I think this Greater Spire is a bit premature. I don't think we do need it quite yet. So we could end up going towards um, air attack upgrades instead. But regardless, we will gain access to Broodlords and Ultras. Usually we go for one, but we will gain access to both. And Nikic is maxing out. Meanwhile, even though Nice did lose quite a bit of his economy, Nice is likewise maxing out himself. And he's still just building up towards five bases now. You can see how defendable we are on hard lead, how close these bases are to each other. We fully wall off with gateways on the left. We're walling off with gateways on the right. We're taking the center base instead, which is where, which is where the army is parked. And breaking this is not going to be easy. Now, when it comes to the army that we have available here to Nice, Corruptor, sorry, uh, Corruptor. Carrier Archon is good, but what's better here is we add in Storm. We add in some High Templar, we add in some Storms. The reason for this is Storm doesn't just zone away the ground army, it also zones away the air army as well. The Sky Toss. It's a, it's a good way to zone away the Corruptors and to punish or even avert any kind of dive that they would go for. Alas, we can see that it's still just Archons and I guess what would be Blink Stalkers. Blink is on the way. Nice, has maxed out. He has maxed, so is Nikic. Broodlords have arrived. How many Corruptors do we have? Oh, 11. That's an okay amount. We could do with some more. The Spores will help. As the army's engaged, Big, big Ling run by. We're going for the mothership. We get the yoink. We do get the yoink. Get a second yoink as well. The mothership is going to be going down. Broodlord's going ham here on the Archons. At the same time, 21 probes go down. We shut down the fourth base. At the same time, we dive on top of the army. Broodlords are being focused down, but so are the carriers. And we shut down every single carrier, but what about the ground army? As nice, he's breaking through with his zealots and his Archons. What shoots down? We need more Broodlords. We need more Broodlords here. Ten Broods on the way for Nikish, but they need time. They need time, and time is something that nice. Sorry, that Nikish does not have. Two bases go down. We can see Nikish trying to break into that central base. We have Zeller reinforcements, and that is going to be enough. We get a full surround. We clean this up. Nice. He's turning back around. Broodlords, they just arrived. We got to go. We have to push, Papi. As Nikish is all in. He's down to 38 workers. He's completely all in at this point. The Zerg has no more economy, no more bank. It's all or nothing here and now. With how many Broodlords? 10. 10 Broodlords. And there's no Sky Toss. We don't need Corruptors. We don't need them. A decent kiting here with the Broodlords. One Broodlord goes down. Lings, they come in first around. There is no storm. No storm is available. And these broodlords are trading well for themselves, but where's the support? They have a couple of lings, but not too much. Yeah, we're chasing this down. We managed to snipe one of the broods. We get a broodlord. Nice is, uh, based on the right hand side, is going to be denied, but again, we're still, we still have an economy, we're still maxing out. Nice has a supply lead. Pushing into these broods is not going to be easy. But he does have blink. Speaking of, there it is. We blink on the, on the army. On the brood. And Nikic, he's running out of steam. He's running out of units. Storm here on the Lings. I believe the Storm misses, but we're down to eight Broodlords. Almost nothing left here. We're down to seven. Down to six. 
Back up to eight. <laughs> That's math. Broodlord is a Bailey do finish up. But this is an L in the coffin, Tempest. Tempest are coming out, and again, no anti-air. Zero anti-air from Nikic. Morphing in purely Broodlords. And it's just not enough. Not anymore. Again, that was such an important fight for Nice earlier where he was able to break two bases essentially of his opponent. Cripple the economy. Maintain himself. Oh, the broods are exposed. Oh. Never mind, we don't quite dive on them. Not quite. There's more results on the way. Tempests have arrived. And you can see the Tempest coming in for a flank. They do get on the army. Focus out of Tempest. We get a big Zella Warping into the main. Zella run by here on the right-hand side as well. Everything is on fire. The Greater Spire is being targeted down as well. Good target firing or good choice here from Nice. To get for the Greater Spire. Does get it. And again, Naked, she barely had an economy to begin with. Does get the prism. But with the death of that Greater Spire, that means no more Broodlords. What you see is what you get. Nine Broodlords here from Nikic. And yeah, bleeds out of base. And Nice is getting back into Skytos. And you can see this five base setup is all he did need. all he needed. Meanwhile, big shout out to Slammer in the chat. Oh my god. I apologize because we had a couple of raids. A big shout out to Apop Tosis earlier. If you're still around, I know it's been a while. I apologize you raided as we were going on a break. Thank you so much for the raid to Apop Tosis and to Slammer as well. Um, I hope you had a good hammer in the Slammer with your shower. Oh. Uh -huh. What? <laughs> Hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for the raid. Hope you guys had a great stream. And meanwhile, if you're just tuning in, welcome everyone. Welcome to the Sparkling Tuning Cup, to the semi-finals of the Sparkling Tuning Cup, number 44. This is our weekly open tournament. Again, I do apologize for my voice. I do have the flu. I have been sick for the past couple of days, and I'm doing I'm doing my best. Oh, doing my best, man. As Nick is just mustering up whatever army he can here to go in for a last ditch effort, last ditch fight. Corruptor is being forced back. Nice, just dancing with the army. Doesn't want to throw away his Tempest. Doesn't want to throw away his lead, despite the fact that Nice is maxed out. He can he can A move, Bobby. We can A move. Oh. If we really did want to. Would you go for it. As again, Nice is just taking it slow and steady here. Ultras are amassing. Uh, because Nice is taking it slow, he's giving Nikit the opportunity to build up. And he does have an army to work with, that is true. And there's maybe a world where if Nice blunders his assault, if he miscontrols, then maybe Nikit can pull off a fight. It's possible. But uh, it's a very slim chance. Very slim chance. Really, Nikish, he's relying on Nice to make mistakes. Is relying on mistakes to be made here for Nice. And without said mistakes, then uh, I'm, I'm not so sure. Not so sure if I. He's managed to get a couple of drones towards the left hand side. Take down some of the spores. Yo, we have Tectonic Destabilizers on the way. Let's go. Do I know the name of my upgrades? <laughs> I say that. I'm pretty sure I, I keep forgetting the new Medivac upgrade, what it's called. I keep forgetting it. It's called something silly, though. <laughs> but uh, I think that's that's the one that I don't know. Is Because um, there's two. There's that one. There's also... um. 
Ultra Speed. Ultra Speed is another one that I that I that slips by my mind. It's not adaptive talents. It's like rejuvenative. Like claws. I don't know. It's it's, it's something silly as well. <laughs> Regardless, we do catch out some stalkers. Good pick up. Stalkers are being thrown away here by Nice as he as he's refining his army. Yes, here we go. We do have nice and moving up with this main army. Finally, there are a couple of vipers. We have we have potential to yoink. Do you have potential? As we are forced to recall back home, we have a big ling ultra counter attack. We force a storm in the mineral line. Twenty three probes go down. A lot of economic damage dealt. You can see the supplies are actually evening up. No shot. Does Nikish have a chance? I mean, we have a comparable economy. Fifty six. Drones to 57 probes. Army sizes are comparable as well. Yo, Nice was up like 60 to 70 supply. <laughs> nice had a massive lead, and that lead is still there. Don't get me wrong, but it's not as large as it once was. The lead is not as massive. So I am concerned. I am concerned here for Nice. Let's see if we can bring it back. Let's see if he can bring it back. Spore's gonna be rotating over. Nikic establishing another base, taking top right. DTs are coming in, but do we have detection? Oh, we will. We soon will. We soon will. As we did not have detection towards the top right, so that is 14 drones going down. It's a lot of damage. A lot of damage dealt. Yo, we're going for the recall into the main. Prism is on the way. The mothership as well has been rebuilt. And there's that recall. We can send everything to the main base. The tech is exposed. The Greater Spire, the Ultra Cavern as well. Broodlords are coming in. Good feedback. Good feedback on the Viper. Decent Storms as well. And Blinding Cloud a little bit lackluster as we are going to be engaging here. And ooh, the Storms are looking good. But the Broodlords are getting the High Templar. They're getting some, but not all. Again, it is going to be a close fight. But the Tempest, they reign supreme. The Tempests are untouched. GG gets called and nice. He will take a 1 0 lead in the series. GG. GG. Well played. Congratulations here. Nice does take the first game. He almost, it almost slipped away. That's what I will say. It almost did slip away, but he was able to hold on quite nicely there. was able to hold on and um <clears throat> so uh my the state of my voice and uh the coughing i've been, i've been muting myself but i've been coughing i've been sneezing or i've been having a runny nose i've been very unwell uh and as a result i'm gonna be passing the torch i'm gonna be passing the, the torch here to another cranky duckling a shout out to yaku of the zaku as he is available he is available here is available here and uh, he will be joining me as i do hand over the rates uh i'm gonna be handing them over poppy so enjoy some yaku casting i'm gonna be observing i'm gonna i'm gonna take take a step back I'm not gonna say anything and i will just be observing and with that i bid you adieu and i leave i leave you in the hands of yaku zaku yes Yes. You have control of the stream, Papi. <laughs> I do. 
What's going on, chat? Now you're locked in here with me and the players as well. We're gonna be continuing on our uh, nice little uh, series that we've got here going. That was unintentional, but it's what we're going with for now. Nice is up one zero. I there we go. Yeah, so I was looking at. Uh, yeah, I saw that. I saw that, and I decided, you know what? It's not fair for only one person to have to suffer through all of this. So we're going to be rotating around with uh, what we're going for. Okay, and here we are now going to be continuing our best of three series here over on Oceanborn where we're here in the top left hand corner of the map swatting all the way in the top left we of course have our red zerg player we have currently teamless I believe yes currently teamless we have Nikki not to be confused with Nikorat Playing for Platinum Heroes, there we go. And over here in the bottom right hand corner of the map, spawning all the way in the bottom right. Playing for Team Little Fairy, but also repping uh, Easy Monet. We have... Nice. A fellow, uh... Fellow Skytoss uh, appreciator. I don't know why I say fellow Skytoss appreciator, but... He is a Skytoss appreciator, to say the least. Yeah, well... Things are gonna be going how... If this game... If the previous game has anything to go off of... We might be, uh... Having to gear ourselves in for... A bit of a longer one... A bit of a longer game once again. To be fair... It was a pretty quick, uh... Transition to Skytoss from what I could observe earlier on from Nice. Uh, very quick transition to Sky Zerg as well from uh, inside of Nickage. What was it? 10 minute corruptors or something like that? When it came down? So. Shouldn't take us uh, too long to get there. Meanwhile, obviously as we are still in the start of the game, Things are going to be looking uh, much, much different for now. Very, very standard from the side of both of our players. Focusing more on economy. Always appreciate when a probe is trying to be annoying with the minerals, but unfortunately for Nice, he left that one mining a little bit too long and won't be able to annoy the drones for too much longer. What I can do is uh, act as a little bit of a spotter for the time being. That wall is not a wall. But I trust Nice uh, to plug it in later down the line with some sort of tech building. Stargate could be coming down from him once again. Light of sight, something I can tell. I have to yell that anyway. They have to come down to pour a little bit of scouts. Nice and normal things that we are quite used to here in PvZ. My eyes are definitely glued a lot more on the side of Nice. Generally, they are a bit more glued on the side of Protoss, as they tend to be much more active in this matchup. That is not an Oracle come down from Nice, but rather a Void Ray. I have been a, a number of players who have been experimenting with Void Ray openings, and by experimenting, really what I mean is bringing us back to 2020, I want to say. Was it late 2020, early 2021? But well, this was definitely a lot more common. Except Nice is rallying it all the way across the map, from what I can see. As opposed to just uh, keeping it around the bases. Okay, halfway across the map is still just about there. It's close enough to uh, all the way around the map. As this was wise from Nice, did learn a little bit from the first game, I suppose, to play a little bit more defensively. Nikic not being overly aggressive, but you still want to be as secure as possible when you are taking a third base as a Protoss player. Quick little transition coming out from Nice. Grab the Oracle, but now going 
<laughs> very deep into gateways in the Twilight Council as well. That's a lot of gateways for this early on. Especially when you're opening up with a Stargate. He was hoping Nikic is uh, able to fully prepare. He wasn't able to get into this base thanks to, thanks to that Void Ray. And so far, I don't think there's anything too out of the ordinary from uh, Nice's build that could really tip him off. He is grabbing that Rotorn, and he will be getting a Lair as well, so potentially going to be getting into quick Galara Constitution Roaches as well. It's a really good way of dealing with these Glaive to Depths that are going to be coming across his way. So he's going to have the production to deal with this, but we'll see if he's uh, able to pick up on what's coming his way quick enough. Oracle, not quite going to get uh, too many drone kills over here. Queen will attack the prism, but was a little bit too late. Two drones will get caught. Three drones, actually, will get caught in that stasis ward. But in the end, not the biggest of deals here for uh, Nikic. Definitely a lot better than... Uh, definitely a much better defense than uh, it could have been. Meanwhile, Nikic actually here... Gathering a couple of Dropper Lords ready, getting ready for a full-on German taxi. Unfortunately, the Queens were a little distracted, weren't quite able to deal with that Stasis Ward, so all of these drones will not be mining. All of these Adepts are going to be coming across the map in one single file, and there's not that many Roaches here for Nikic just yet. Thankfully, he did catch wind of this. His Queens are bunched together, and they do have quite a bit of energy on them. A couple of the Transfusers do get popped, uh, but these Roaches are ripe for the picking, getting picked off one by one. Drones come off of stasis only to walk into a wall of adepts and nice. He's controlling them really really well. He's not uh, focusing too hard on fighting the armies. He is shading back and forth very well. Picking off lone units where he can but now it looks like Nikic has gathered his defenses just about well enough. Nine drones go down. So far, 11 drones, 12 drones even, and a queen, potentially? Okay, not quite a queen. 12 drones go down, and I'm not entirely convinced that this is worth it yet uh, for Nice. Especially with the counterattack on the horizon. The Lower Constitution about to finish up here. Drop Lords, I think, got scouted. Yeah, they get scouted. Not too many queens went down earlier. That's very important to uh, take note of, as this counterattack from Nick H is very much hinged on his ability to have these queens for anti-air. Roaches, funnily enough, they don't do anything against Void Race, so they're going to be hitting very, very strongly against these Zealots and against these ground units, but Prismatic Alignment uh, Void Race are going to be their bane. Oh, Drop Alert's getting targeted down, but not quickly enough for the queens to get caught. All, every single queen will unload, and Nikic will be keeping up this attack. Battery overcharge does get popped, and that's going to help a ton. Prismatic alignment is on cooldown for the time being, so these Void Rays are going to take a little while longer to deal with the Roaches. It looks like the queens are starting to really break through. Huge reinforcement of Lings are coming down. Nice trying to do his best to really body block and really fight in a choke point as best he can, but it looks like that's just too much Zerg. GG is called, and Nikic will be taking game number two, tying us up in this best of three series. One to one. Very nicely done here from Nikic. Very well played to be playing it safe for uh, the most part in that game. Wasn't quite able to obviously get into the main base of Nice was quite able to uh, really scout all of the tech and the massive transition into uh, gateways later down the line, but he was still getting a Rotron regardless. I suppose he was planning to uh, go for a massive queen drop and uh, Roach all in regardless, but even still, there was a little bit of a window there where Nice really could have messed up those plans, really come in with uh, everything that he really come in with all of those adepts and uh, take out as many drones as he could before uh, before Nikic could really produce too much of a roach count. So very, very important for Nikic then to, um, to have been able to keep as many of his army units alive and his queens alive for as long as he did. But with that being said, 
But I'm going to get ready to our ace match. I glossed over it a little bit, but uh, yes, this is the bottom semifinals. We'll have another semis after this, and then we'll have a grand finals to determine who is going to be our sparkling tuna of the... What is this? Second, uh, third, fourth, third, third week of March of 2024. Our 44th Sparkling Tuna. I like how that all uh, aligns with us. A lot of force coming down. And speaking of force. Here we are now on Site Delta, which is the fourth most popular map in the current map pool. Do not fact check me on that. I am correct. We are here on Site Delta, LE. We're, of course, in the bottom right-hand corner of the map, spawning all the way in the bottom right. We have our red Zerg player. He is going to be representing Platinum Heroes. We have Nickich. Or Nikki. Never quite uh, got confirmation on that. Anyway, here on the top left hand corner map, spawning all the way in the top left hand corner, we of course have our blue Protoss player. He is going to be representing Little Fairy and also repping Clan Easy Monet, one of the most sparkling tunas that we've had, but really in quite a bit of trouble here. Up against the Zerg opponent, we have Nice. Doing very well in game number one to uh, defend against Nikic until eventually going into a massive sky toss transition. Game number two, uh, pretty much the opposite. Uh, pretty much the opposite thing happened. Uh, trying to be a bit more aggressive, getting uh, held against, and having a mass contingent of roaches and queens really mess up the rest of his game. But now we're laying it all on the line. Now everything is on the table. Everything's on the wall. Everything is coming down to one map remaining. And I, for one, cannot wait to see what both of our players throw out. Nice. Once again, been pretty consistent with just trying to be annoying with his probe. As fun fact, there are only a set number of workers that can mine from a mineral patch at a time. So, yeah, if this probe comes in and starts mining, it means a drone won't be able to mine from that patch for a little while, but I want to be careful not to, uh, not to fully commit. As your own worker will cease to mine and will start the process of going all the way back home and, uh, depositing those five minerals into your base. You also want to be very careful not to die to links. Or not to have that probe die to links. That has been your, uh, Information Centaur, uh, PSA for the hour. As well for players just uh, opening up about the same as previously. Nice little going for that Stargate. Still going to be scouting a little bit with this Adept. I highly, highly doubt that he's going to try to go for another Glaived Adept opening two games in a row. Nice just doesn't really strike me as a Glaived Adept boy. <laughs> I, I, I'm very likely wrong on this, but you know when I think of the Taiwanese Protoss players, Nice has always struck me as, you know, one of the more macro-oriented uh, of them all. You know, compared to uh, his contemporaries in Haas and But Always. And, I mean, if we want to extend that region a little bit uh, more to include Hong Kong as well, V-Stork was pretty much the antithesis of Nice for a very long time. As so far, once again, going to be opening up with Void Race. Well, a Void Ray for the time being. As Nikic goes on, gets his three hatcheries. I also have to doubt that Nikic will want to go for another germ taxi uh, two games in a row. But roaches don't seem to be a... I mean, roaches are always going to be a pretty staple unit of ZVP regardless, so... Should be seeing a roach warren at some point very, very soon as... This time, Nikic was able to confirm the Oracle pro producing from that uh, Stargate, I believe. No, I don't know. Potentially, as this time, Nice is going to be focusing a lot more on his Stargate production. Not going to be doing any quick transitions into more gateways, as Nikic is inclined to uh, defend against this, take this seriously as well. 
getting a bunch of spore crawlers uh, where we can. You see a forge and a twilight council. An interesting choice coming out here from Nice, as this oracle needs to be very careful not to run into ooh, another spore or another queen. There's only one route to escape. And Nice will take it. Will not try to risk uh, going back in for another form of harass. That was rough, to say the least, for Nice. He will be getting another oracle to meet up with this one, so he has the option to go in for round two, but he does need to be very, very careful. This oracle is not long for this world, to say the least, as Nickage will also search things up quite a lot. I was anticipating more roaches, but for the time being, he is going to be focusing a lot more on Link Bane, even getting not only getting that baneliness, but also uh, researching plus ones, which I'm not sure what uh, Nickage saw, but is the right response for these plus one blink stalkers that are coming down the line. Adepts try to come in with the oracles, but they don't get to, uh, aren't able to get too much damage done. In the end, both adepts go down. Both oracles live, thankfully, and only two drones will die here. So uh, once again, not the best start that uh, Nice could have hoped for, but he's not that far behind uh, either. About even on the base count. Uh, little bit slower when it comes to getting his fourth phase, but hey, it's PBC. If you if you're down one base against a third player, you're pretty much on even bases regardless, but even still, Nice will be getting his uh, own fourth, which is something that Nickage will have to watch out for. Really good use of these oracles uh, after not quite being able to harass with them, just throw down some reveals, get some uh, creep tumors as these Oof, these stalkers moved out a little bit too soon. Blink is still a long ways off, a little ways off from being complete. And so Nice will pay for not being able to micro them by having four of his stalkers go down immediately. Nikic will pick up on this fourth base coming down. Nice sends everything home. The oracles don't have much energy left. And his fourth will be forced to cancel as Nikic grabs a fifth base behind this. And will be throwing down a, and will be throwing down an infestation pit where that came from as well. Nikic is well aware that he's got the map control right now. That's one of the difficult things about playing a Blinkstalker style like this as Protoss is it's very, very momentum heavy. You know, if you get caught out in the middle of the map and you lose a round, one production round of your stalkers already, you're pretty much giving your Zerg opponent free reign. For quite some time. So Nikic, well aware of this, just gonna be taking up as much as he can. Nice, on the other hand, uh, not too far behind when it comes to his own tech, still grabbing that Robo Bay, uh, opting more for Colossus for the time being, which is the smart choice to make uh, when you're up against Lings. The last thing you want is to uh, throw out Purification Novas and have the Lings dodge them and end up having them having those Novas connect with your own units regardless. Nice actually going double, uh, double Rover production, so double Colossus, he is playing this out very, very safe. Which is something that you can get away with on four bases here. So, yeah, he definitely has the economy to sustain him for now. Nickage going to be doing everything he can to prevent that uh, economy from getting up and running. As he will confirm the Colossus, but will also confirm that he won't really be able to do much against that fourth base. Banelink's gonna not quite connect with the Mineral Line. That's a very clutch force field coming out here from Nice. Completely blocking any Banelink from connecting with, well, just about anything that uh, is mining. He will lose a sentry, he will lose a shield battery, but not the biggest of deals. Meanwhile, Nikic still taking up hard. Gonna be grabbing that Lurker Den, and the Hive finished up a while ago as well, so... Yeah, he, he will be able to get his Lurker upgrades in sync. That's a lot of spine crawlers being thrown down. I like this from Nikic. You know, what's one possible way that he could uh, sort of throw his lead? Well, if Nice sneaks a couple of Adepts or... Adepts or uh, Zealots into his mineral line. So he is taking this very, very seriously. He knows that 
He's a little bit vulnerable while transitioning into his lurkers. But once he does finish up his tech, once his vipers uh, are able to suck up enough energy, I think he's going to be feeling very confident uh, with how the rest of this game should go, as Nikic already almost maxed out. Nice, still struggling a little bit in that regard. Uh, and these robo, these high-tech robo units really take a while to uh, produce. And we're kind of at the point where you don't want to be relying only on gateway units for uh, as a Protoss player. I like these oracles just chasing this one uh, overseer. You know, what's it planning to do? It could throw down. An, it could act as vision for Anitis. Who knows? Yeah, be prepared. You got to keep your eye on it. As it looks like, nice will now be working on his own little uh, tech transition. As he builds up a little bit of a bank, nice will be maxed out. So, yeah, the time now is to build up his bank and take better fights, ideally transition to Sky Toss, potentially, as this game continues. Oh, that's a very good reveal here from uh, Nice. Attacks pretty much every single Lurker. Unfortunately, not a lot of units here that can really uh, take advantage of that reveal. And Nice is in a little, little bit of a precarious position over here, specifically, as Nikic will take the high ground. He's gonna have to rely a lot on these purification overs, a lot on these shield batteries, a lot on just being able to outrange and force uh, Nikic to unborrow. As Nikic continues to poke and prod forward, very good feedback, but very good yoink as well. Only one Colossus will get taken out though, and it looks like the firepower of Nice's army will be able to overwhelm the high ground position here of Nikic. Oh, such an important feedback right there for Nice to have been able to nail. Nikic will now try to go for a little bit of a run by, but he will recall all of his Colossus. Oh, might lose a Colossus. At least loses one of them, and... Yeah, just one of them and uh, five... Oh, the other one went down uh, to a couple of stray lings as well. So yeah, he will be losing two of his Colossus and five of his probes. Losing five probes at this point, I suppose, isn't... A big deal, but those Colossus are definitely pretty expensive losses. Nice is transitioning out of it. He is trying to get Storm right now, and it looks like, yeah, he is going to be grabbing that Fleet Beacon. He wants to transition into his Skytoss army, but still. This is, once again, giving Nikic quite a lot of uh, breathing room, as Nice's army just is that much less threatening than it once was. Nice, not one to take this line down though, we'll be sending a couple of Zealot run bys, he knows he's to uh, trade some of his resources as Nikic goes for a full on counter assault as well. Oh, I'm keeping my eye on those uh, High Templar! I do not want them to- Ooh, die to the Lurker Spikes just like that! Oh no! Oh no, and I don't think that was a good enough trade at all here for Nice. All of the Lurkers still survived. A lot of Hydras went down, a lot of Links went down, but that's nothing compared to this backbone of Lurkers. Very expensive loss, man, especially gas-wise. Nikic now going to be grabbing a Great Aspire, going to be getting a lot of Corruptors as well. Nice was holding pretty well until he wasn't. Still, he wasn't. So once again, we see Nice on the back foot, being forced to defend once again, which I guess in fairness is the position you want to be in anyway if you're going to be transitioning into Sky Toss, but even still, Nikic is already kind of preparing uh, a counter to that. Brute Lord's on the way. He wants to be careful. He wants to make sure that he still has a couple of Corruptors uh, still remaining. Uh, for him to be able to fight that Sky Toss. A lot of lings being thrown at the bases of Nice. That's kind of what you have to do right now. As Nikic, why are you getting rid of some of your units that aren't going to trade well in the, uh, in the big fights and the uh, army engagements? As Nice is going to be trying to harass as best he can, but yeah, you remember all of those 12 or so spying crawlers that Nikic was getting earlier on? Well, 
Yeah, this is why. This is exactly why he's uh, getting them. I think he's still going to be losing a couple of his drones, so uh, 11 of them going down. Still has an alright drone count of roughly 70, but his bank is definitely leaving uh, something to be desired. As we have some pretty wonky unit compositions, to be completely honest here. We have Nickage with a whole lot of lurkers, a handful of uh, lings, and he's trying to transition to corrupt the Brute Lord. Meanwhile, he have nice trying to go for a Sky Toss army, but not quite able to trade out his uh, gateway units just yet. So his Sky Toss army is what exactly one Tempest and one uh, Mothership. As Nick is finally starting to bleed out quite a bit uh, on those drones. Very good Zealot Harass from Nice earlier on. Meanwhile, Nice, I think he recognizes that he has a little bit of a window where he has a bit of a more potent army as long as he can keep these High Templar alive. I hope he keeps them alive. He will be able to uh, really take the. really turn the tables and take the hurt to Nickage as. when Purification Nova will connect with a lot of lurkers. Very good connection here for Nice. Space will still survive, however. As it looks like. We're getting a little bit of deja vu in this series, so strap yourselves in, chat, as this could be a bit of a longer one for now. Nice. About to max out with a bunch of Tempests, still very, very committed to uh, these High Templar, which is uh, very, very important to have uh, against Corruptors and Blue Lords specifically. He's also maintaining a pretty healthy... Uh, a pretty healthy Immortal and uh, Disrupt count, as, of course, Nickish still has a, a lot of Lurkers that uh, can cause a lot of trouble, such as sieging right outside of the space. Yeah, it looks like with Nice all the way on the other side of the map, he will have to just give up that base. Ultralist gonna be connected with a couple of these stray uh, Archons. That's a very expensive loss here. Tempest not quite able to come back home with this army just yet. Very good storms coming out from Nice. Nick is starting to dodge these storms. Tempest will go down. Mothership will go down. That's a minus two fifty, minus two fifty. Or is it three fifty? It was a something or, or another. As Nice is uh, minus three hundred. Yes, yeah, you're right in between there. I, I got I got it in the end, you know, math. Right in between two fifty and three fifty. It should be a 50. There should be a 50 somewhere in there. That's uh, my feedback to the balance council. Anyway, we'll get Zilla Harass as well. We'll be killing one of these bases of Nickage. So, in the end, I want to say Nickage traded better when it came to the army engagement, but he is really starting to uh, exhaust some of his income options. I only say that, but it's actually roughly even to uh, nicest income for now. So... Yeah, it looks like Nickage could afford to lose that base in the end. In fact, he's lower on uh, workers for the time being, but of course, he is still maxed out. Both of our players are maxed out, which just means that Nickage will have a larger army supply count in the end. The Purification Nova, from what I could see. Lurkers do go down, but yeah, Nickage is still fully focused on his transition now. Nickage could afford to lose that base on the right-hand side. Nice cannot afford to lose this base here on the bottom left side. It is his freshest base right now, and yeah, his main source of income, really. He's gonna be trying to retake it, and this is a very well-fortified base, especially with ooh, the main army still standing nearby. Huge storms will connect with just about every one of those Corruptors. Most of them will live, but they are very badly bruised. And we can definitely see Nickage starting to take quite a bit of a lead when it comes to uh, the income. Maybe not as much in the minerals, but definitely a lot in the gas count. And at this stage of the game, gas is everything. Yeah, you're not going to be making a whole bunch of links to fight a whole bunch of zelts. No, 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 no. You're going to be making Ultras, Papi. You're going to be making Brood Lords. You're going to be making Tempest, Void Race, and whatnot. 
Which costs quite a lot of minerals, but more importantly, costs a lot of gas as well. Nick is laying siege to this fresh base, or attempted fresh base here, that Nice is trying to uh, retake. Root Lords aren't uh, actually in position, so. Yeah, those cannons are providing a lot of vision for the rest of this army to really get something done. Unfortunate there uh, for the Hydras. They will go down to the Purification Nova, but at the very least, Nikich is able to keep all of his lurkers alive, and that's really the core unit that he wants to uh, be sieging this. <laughs> I like that reaction to the uh, to the recall. We didn't know what was being recalled either. Nikich certainly didn't. It could have been the entire army, but in the end, was only a single observer, so he took that seriously, and as a result, we'll be making it out of here with most of his uh, lurkers alive. Both players now going for a little bit of a base trade. Nice will be killing that base in the top right-hand side earlier on. Nikic trying to lay siege on this left corner base. Not a very fresh base, but still a base that uh, Nice is relying a lot of his income on. And he's finding it to be a pretty tough nut to crack. That's a lot of cannons. That's a lot of shield batteries. That's a lot of high Templar. That's a lot of void rays. And that's quite a lot of uh, Tempest backing all of that up. And meanwhile, behind all of that, that's also a lot of mining going on at a base. Nice. Never felt as though he needed to really uh, pull the probes away. And of course, he never did. They were very, very safe. And they were uh, very, very important to keeping the sustainability of this economy. As the Ultras try to come in for hugs, they will be able to take out these High Templar. A couple of storms do get thrown down. We'll be connecting with some of these Corruptors, but they can just stay in them for too long. Viper wants to sort on a Parabomb. And we'll be connecting right in the heart of this army. A couple of High Templars do get warped in, but they don't have energy for Storm yet. These Tempests are in a lot of trouble. Battery energy is out. A couple of fresh batteries do get popped. But these Corruptors are chasing them far out of range. They're getting very low, though. Nickage underestimating, or maybe just not quite catching, these three Archons beneath the Sky Army the entire time, providing a lot of splash damage onto the Corruptors. These Archons, man, the absolute MVPs of that engagement. We all Nickage trying to lay siege to the freshest base of Nice once again. Both players are starting to starve a little bit when it comes to their income. Yeah, we haven't gotten a full split map scenario just yet, but we're getting there. And we're getting to a point where every base from uh, this point on counts. Nice, forced to abandon this base, and that is going to be a massive blow to his economy. Reminder, neither player really has a bank to begin with. So income is everything right now. This one <laughs> poor Colossus. Was so exposed, I almost expected it to uh, get taken out. I'm sure it expected to get taken out too. But no, it will escape and it will tell the tales to its comrades. Nice knows that he's in a bit of a precarious position, so he needs to ooh, turn the tables as best he can. He cannot afford to have some of his high tech units get picked off one by one like that. Brute Lord's doing a pretty good job of chasing these. Zealots away, but Nikic still going to be losing pretty much an entire mineral line. And yeah, we're not quite at the point where the Zerg player can really throw away drones to get a larger army. Nikic is on a thousand minerals, a thousand gas uh, as a bank. Nice, however, not doing so hot either. This base is going to go down. I mean, it is a bit of a mined out base, but there's still some gas to get from it, and yeah, it does mean that there's less of a defense on the map, or rather, it kind of shrinks his zone of control on this map, it is probably a better way of putting it. That's why this middle base was uh, really important for Nice to uh, to maintain, even if he wasn't mining from it for a while. For a, while. a couple of uh, Corruptors do get caught by these Void Rays, but Nick is going to be pretty quick to get the rest of them in position. Uh, this Mothership, this Mothership will get yoinked! That's another minus 300, minus 300. That's like 50. If you think about it. Don't think too hard about it, though. GG is now called, and Nickage 
will be taking this series, the semi-final series, 2-2-1. Two, two, Very nicely played here from Nickage. Very much... It definitely felt that uh, Nickage was very much aware of his win conditions in game number two and game number three, especially. Never really felt like he was out of control in that last game in particular. Which, again, I suppose really comes down to you know, going for that plus one Blink Stalker style that, um, that Nice was trying to go for earlier on. Or at least at the start of the game. Very, very momentum focused. And once you lose that momentum early on, it becomes very difficult to try to uh, to try to regain that map control later down the line. Yeah, definitely uh, an uphill battle that Nice had to fight from then point on. Fought it very, very well, though. Uh... Had a very good transition. Not the smoothest transition into Sky Toss, but, you know, in fairness, a lot of that did also have to do with the fact that he had to be able to deal with the Lurkers and the Hydras that Nikic was throwing his way, but in the end was able to get that Sky Toss transition. Had some really good fights as well uh, when he was defending against the... when he was against, defending against the Sky, Sky Zerg being thrown his way, but in the end... Nikic had free reign of the map, and he used it to the fullest. He used that free reign to the fullest. He got oh, as many bases as he could afford, as soon as he could afford them. Mined a whole bunch, and uh, yeah, just continued to produce units and uh, tech up and get that map control. And so with that, that's going to be concluding our first... Semi-finals. Nikic will, of course, now be our first finalist of Sparkling Tuna Cup number 44. The question now is, who will meet him in those grand finals? Is it going to be another Protoss player? A bit of a different Protoss player from uh, the one he just faced, but another Protoss player nonetheless. Or will it be... I don't really want to call him a Terran player, but yeah, the other possibility is Han Mono, the waifu. There we go. Indeed. Will Nikic be facing another Protoss player, or will he be facing a waifu is the question. I am, of course, talking about Han Mono, the most honorable of moderables. He does play Terran, but I'm not sure if we can really call him a Terran player, you know? You guys know. You. Yes, this light is uh, reminding me. Amono um, is very ooh right now. I was aware that he dressed up to stream his POV today. I was not aware that he actually has a... You say voice changer light, but um, I think that might just be his voice. Yeah. So if anybody is curious, that's twitch.tv slash honmono9. If you want to get some of uh you wanna get some of Hon Mono's POV, uh, and also something a little extra. He is very kawaii. But for now, he is gonna be sorting out his vetoes with Geralt. Who is uh who are both uh, going to be facing each other in that TVP. Literally Sakura. Some of us are uh, saying literally... Uh... Oh god, what's it? Not 2B, not near Automata. What's the other one? They're twins and they're maids. Re is it ReZero? Literally ReZero is what I'm going with until corrected. Yes, ReZero. Uh, do view at your own, uh, do view at your own risk, though. Is what I will, uh, is what I will caution to our viewers. 
In the meantime, though, while you're deciding or taking a little bit of a risk assessment as to whether or not you do want to be exposed to that, I will remind everyone to hydrate your hydras, stretch your roaches, drain your disruptors. Hydrate your hydras, stretch your roaches, drain your disruptors. trying to think of a tie-in to some kind of Terran unit, but uh, I can't really think of too many, but also exclamation mark Patreon in the chat will bring you to the Cranky Ducklings Patreon page as well. It is where we saw source our funding for these tournaments as well as uh, subs, as well as subscriptions to the Twitch channel as well, so if you're interested in more events coming along, coming down, that is uh, one way that you too, dear viewer, can contribute. We just recently passed our 200 uh, funding goal. Funding goal, which will mean more tournaments down the line, larger prize pools down the line as well. But for now, our players have finished your vetoes. We're going to be getting ready for our second semifinals of the evening. It's going to be a TVP with Geralt and Hon Mono. Or Gerald, if you prefer. Alrighty then, here we are now spawning into Golden Aura. We're here in the bottom right hand corner of the map, spawning all the way in the bottom right. We of course have our blue Protoss player coming out from the land of Poland. He is going to be representing Cy Storm Gaming PSG. We have. Gerald. And over here in the top left hand corner of the map, starting all the way in the top left, we of course have our red Terran player coming out from the land of Japan, also representing Korea, but also representing Team Hyper One. We have Hon Mono. Her most honorable of monorables. Predictions are now live in the chat, dear viewers. So, if you'd like to predict who wins this entire series, this entire semifinals, wager a couple of grapes on that. You have about two or three minutes to do so. After uh, this is said. And speaking of having only two minutes to do so. I'm gonna be very cheeky in this game. That's a one Rex proxy, but two Rex in total. It'd be very important for Geralt to be able to get in. And confirm the total number of production. So far, not quite able to go in. Might be a little bit tipped off by the lack of a um by the lack of a CC. But we shall see in the end. So you're marinating your marauders. That's exactly what uh, Hanmono is doing right now, and that's exactly what Geralt scouts. He scouts that tech lab, he scouts that racks, he sees it's producing. It can't be anything other than ghosts. No, it can't be ghosts, literally, at this stage of the game. It can't be anything other than marauders. So Geralt is going to have to be very careful with how he defends against this. And be forced to pull the boys a couple of times, I do imagine. If possible, uh, try to use the Nexus to uh, tank some shots. Stalker is... well, a single Stalker anyway. Definitely is not quite what you want to deal against Marauders. But, oh, chill battery does go live. And all of a sudden, Geralt has a better chance of holding. A couple of boys do get pulled. Hanmono producing Marines back at home while producing Marauders on the other side of the map. Battery Overcharge is available, but of course, Geralt wants to save it for when he absolutely needs it, aka right now. And with that, he's going to be able to hold. He's going to be able to kill two of these SCVs so far. Amono is very committed with this build. He, there is no more production being made back at home. There is no this is natural base. All of the boys are being pulled. Almost all the boys are being pulled, and... Uh, yeah, Han Mono needs to end this now, or he's never going to be able to end it. 
boys are being pulled for Geralt as well. A couple of them will go down, but of course Geralt can't afford to lose uh, his workers. He's up uh, a base. He has two Nexuses with Chrono Boost. He can afford to lose these workers as long as he doesn't lose his core unit. Kill battery will go down, and this is still a lot of Terran for an early game Protoss uh, to really deal with. Boys are fighting boys. We've got hot boy on boy action. As Homono tries to get that bunker up and running. Nice little bit of mineral walking. I want to say mineral walking, but I'm not convinced those uh, SCVs didn't just go around, go around the probes and take them out. Geralt is starting to lose a lot of workers. Technically behind, but again, he's up A base, so he, there's still a chance for him to hold. Uh, not if he starts losing his stalker still. So it does get made, another stalker will go down, and oh, this is looking rough for our blue Protoss player. Zealots, really good against Marauders, but with concussive shells, it suddenly becomes possible for Marauders to start kiting against all of this. Marauders starting to get pushed into a corner. Boys are doing their damnedest to try to hold against this. Really nice rounds against the Marines. It looks like there's another soccer that does get popped. One Marauder remaining here for Hamono. And it will go down. Technically, a hold. But Gerald also lost 23 probes throughout all of that. 24 in total throughout this game. And so Hanmono, despite pulling all of his boys earlier, despite not getting a natural base, he knows that he can rebuild at this point, even getting a Cyclone. Because why the hell not? He knows that Geralt is broke right now. He knows that Geralt won't be able to afford to produce anything, really. All he needs is cheap units. And eventually he's going to be able to grind all of this down. Even getting his starport behind all of this. Yeah, this was a rough start to say the least for Geralt. This is, he is still holding as best he can. He knew exactly how committed Han Mono is to this all in. Well, I mean, I say all in, but it's no longer an all in. Geralt really needs to hope for a miracle with that Adept. Nexus goes down, so yeah, he doesn't even have the base advantage anymore. And with that, Amono's going to be taking game number one. Just like so. This is why we say watch Hanmono at your own risk, because he may be kawaii, but he is also very vicious when, when he gets into his game. That was... A rough start to say the least here for uh for Geralt unable to really scout what was going on until it was a little bit too late and uh yeah unfortunately just not unfortunately just not having an opener that could really um deal effectively against uh this type of build I suppose I mean you can't Really, you can't really blame him. I mean, it's game number one in a best of three series. Geralt wanted to open up normal. He wasn't expecting proxy marauders up on his face in game number one of all games. But, um, yeah. That was a very good control from Hanmono as well. Uh, with the, when it came to kiting with his marauders, when it came to uh, kiting against the probes as well. Keeping his own, or making sure that his own SCVs were also tanking most of those shots. So... Yeah, unfortunate game one here for Geralt, but he is very eager to try to make up for that. Immediately, game number two, lobby number two was ready. Uh, was ready. He said, "Let's go." And so here we are. Now going to be continuing our series on Hecate. We're here in the top right hand corner map, spawning all the way in the top right. We have our blue Protoss player coming out from the land of. Poland he is of course going to be representing Cy Storm Gaming PSG. We have Gerald. And over here in the bottom left hand corner map spawning all the way in the bottom left here we have our red Terran player coming out from the land of Japan but also at some point in the past the land of Korea. 
is going to be representing Team Hyper One. He's going to be representing all the waifus. We have Han Mono. Geralt, not one to be fooled twice in a series. Being very, very uh, vigilant with his probe, being very, very diligent to scout what's coming his way. Seems pretty normal things. Uh, is a little bit of an little bit of an earlier uh, second gas here, but uh, you know this could always. But there's a number of things that a uh, second gas at this time can mean. It always means factory. But it doesn't mean doesn't necessarily mean aggression. We do see a lot of Terran players in TVP even go for the early second gas, go for the uh, factory expand just to be safe. As Geralt being as annoying as Jesus. I've opened my mic and didn't pick that up. It sounded like that was a clown horn <laughs> honking somewhere, which is fitting, I would say. But regardless, it is going to be a little bit of a 1-1. One, one. No command center just yet, but I mean, come on, this should be a factory expand, right? Han Mono, you're not going to go for another one base build, right? Right. There we go. As Geralt going to be anticipating a little bit of a harass, a light harassment force coming his way, so going to be opting for uh, more than one adept. Initial adept to scout, second adept to uh, try to take out the re any reapers or potentially hellions that are going to be coming into his base. Hanmono checking for proxies. I'm not sure why Hanmono is this, uh, is this worried about a proxy being thrown this way. Well. That's a bit of a lie. I know exactly why Hanmono is worried about a proxy being thrown his way. He proxied in game number one. He's expecting to get a bit of a taste of his own medicine in game number two. Not the case, though. Here. Gerald is a, uh... Not one to... Soup to such, uh... What's it called? Not reparations, uh... Redemptions? Retributions? Retributions? Well, let's go with retributions. At least not uh, today. I'm gonna go for a little bit of a heavier scouting force. Uh, three Reapers and two Hellions. This is, was a little bit more common a couple of months ago. You know, before Cyclone meta really, really settled down. But uh, yeah, something you still see every so often in TVP. Again, just to do some scouting, just to uh, get a little bit of a sense of what your Protoss opponent is going for how economic they're playing, how greedy they're playing, or uh, what sort of tech they're going to be going for. So for Geralt's been doing a really good job of keeping these units away from his base. Going to be able to kill most of them as well. Only a single Hellion going to be making it home, and it's going to be making it home with zero information whatsoever. We, however, can see that it's going to be a bit of a blink opening here for Geralt, so a very versatile opener here. Doesn't have too many gateways, so I can't imagine. Yeah, doesn't have too many gateways, so Geralt probably isn't going to be aggressive with his blink. Is instead opting for a third base, is instead going to try to uh, use these use these stalkers to try to catch harassing units, try to catch potential drops as well. Geralt been very, very good at uh, slipping a couple of adepts into Hamono's main base consistently throughout this game. Another three SCVs go down, and uh, he also gets a full scout of what's going on in this base. Geralt is ahead so, so many workers for now. He's going to be ahead in one base as well. So Hanmono, I mean, he, his build already got a little bit scouted, which is going to be rough for him, but he needs to tie up the damage somehow. He needs to be able to go across the map and cancel the surface, ideally. Uh, so far, it's actually Geralt who goes across the map. Being a lot more active with his Blink Stalkers. You love to see it. You also love to see uh, Blink Stalkers being able to pick off one tank as they make it across the map. Oh, there's a second tank over here. Oh, but it's only one very boost-up Stalker, so yeah, that tank will be able to deal with it. 
Geralt buying himself a lot of time to prepare his defenses back at home. Hamono mostly been losing just uh, a handful of SCVs here. I say that as the Liberator goes down, and this attack is a lot weaker and a lot more uh, flaccid as Hamono really wanted it to be. We'll be able to take out that pylon. Uh, potentially going to be able to take out the side four. Which is pretty big, especially if uh, you're Geralt right now and you're opting for a bit more of a blink hip style. Replication Nova will not quite connect. Well, it will connect with the bunker. It's a bunker that's in production. SCV will be able to finish building that, and uh, well, I'm surprised at how much uh, range that tank actually has from that spot. Anyway. Hamono saw that handful of stalkers on his side of the map, so he knows that there can't be much home right now for Geralt. Could be coming across the map, and oof, that's a juicy connection with that purification Nova! And so far, only both of them will be going down. That was a very, very costly uh, trade, however, for Geralt. Gonna be losing not only his Disruptor, but also his Immortal, and also his. Uh, and also a bunch of his stalkers. Colossus now out though, and this should be enough, more than enough really, for Geralt to hold what remains. A couple of expensive units did go down here for Geralt, but he kept all of his workers alive and he took zero damage at his bases. Well, he lost his cyber core, so he will have to remake that, or he has been forced to remake that, but regardless, very solid hold here for Geralt. He is going to be far, far ahead for quite some time in this game. Hamono not quite going to be able to uh, follow up on this damage. Going to be forced to... Oh, Going to be forced to macro. <sighs> the worst fate for a Hyper 1 Terran player. As Hanmono, yeah, just macroing up, just ramping up his production as much as he can. Definitely appreciate this uh, from Hanmono, playing it safe. He is playing a Ravenless build, which is almost unheard of nowadays in TVP. It will mean that he's going to be able to be a bit more efficient with his resources. You know, he's not getting a one super gas heavy spellcaster so you can get more damaging units like marines, marauders, and tanks and whatnot, but also means that he's not going to have vision, or not going to have detection at his bases, so this uh, missile turret, uber important. Just in case, just in case some DTs come in and uh, try to act as the final nail in the coffin. I'm going to be as annoying as possible with these two unupgraded uh, Liberators being very quick to unsiege and uh, resiege at different locations and bases. Geralt, he was prepared. Han Mono, though, very quick to react. Han Mono will scan, will confirm uh, the army of Geralt. So you notice that right now Geralt is also just a lot more focused on macroing up and making sure that he has a stable economy before getting before transitioning to his late tech. Speaking of which, Archon's already being morphed. I don't believe he's researched Storm just yet. He has not, but yeah, that's definitely going to be an option for him as this game continues. Very important to diversify your AoE damage, your AoE channels as a Protoss player. As Geralt has secured a pretty safe army for the time being, so he's going across the map. These tanks are exposed! And one of them will go down. A little bit of a cheeky drop here from Hon Mono. Will get caught by the army on the retreat, but he will also take out a single Colossus. So all in all, a tank and a couple of Marauders for a Colossus. Not a bad trade here for Hon Mono. What he really needs to worry about, though, is uh, Geralt outsizing him and outscaling him as this game continues. Because, of course, 
while he traded better in that defense, he also kind of got a bit of his momentum stalled. Again, he was setting up a drop. He wanted to send it across the map to try to slow down the economy of Geralt, but once it was caught, uh, Hamono now realizes, okay, I need to be safe. I need to take this seriously. He even is starting to see things that aren't there. Thought that there was a observer, but it was not. In fact, you already killed the observer, Hamono. But he's just getting flashbacks, because, you know, that is that is what happens to even the best of us in a TVP like this, you know? I don't know, I'm not really sure where I'm going with that. This is our uh, Terran PSA, by the way, for all Terran players uh, who are watching. If you think you see something cloaked, it's best to assume that you saw that it's something cloaked. And not that uh, your eyes are going crazy. I'm going to really start to tech up. Still very far behind when it comes to the economy. But we are getting to a point where both armies can really go head to head against one another. It's going to depend a lot on these EMPs and how quick Han Mono is to uh, throw them out. As a war prism sneaks into the main base. Sky Terror not quick enough to uh, cancel this warp. And while most of the army does get pulled back into the main... Yep, Geralt is going to be trying uh, to get something done here over at the third base. A little bit premature here for Hamono to try to pull away from his main base and support the main army. But not the biggest of deals. Only one. So there's only one cell in the end. Despite that, though, that warp in was able to kill a lot of SCVs. Hanmono down about 30 workers as Geralt takes a 5th and a 6th back-to-back, while Hanmono is still struggling to get a 4th. His army, though, is looking very, very potent. Very important for Geralt right now, and it's something that Geralt has been really good at, is not uh, overextending himself, not jumping into where into positions where Hamono really wants him to fight at. Another 13 probes, probes, SCVs, go down in his natural base location. So, yeah, Hanmono really starting to starve when it comes to the income. See Gerald uh, mining about three times the minerals uh, right now, and twice the gas. Hanmono, he's had enough, he's going for it. And by going for it, I mean killing a spotter pylon. She is about to get rebuilt. Yeah, Hamono knows that he can win an army engagement, and if he wins decisively, he will have free reign to go across the map and really uh, get somewhere with a counterattack, but he also knows that he's not going to win decisively if he fights Hanmono in the middle of the map. So, yeah, we're seeing Hanmono if he tries to fight Geralt in the middle of the map, is what I meant. So right now we're seeing Hamono really trying to do whatever he can to try to trade efficiently, try to bait Geralt into him. Still hasn't gotten that fourth base yet, which really, really is starting to worry me. Producing a couple of, and by a couple I mean one CC now. This is a good conke for Hamono! Good split and really good target firing on top of those disruptors. Hamono going to be able to take out every single robo unit very decisively, and this is that win that Hanmono needed to break free. This is that engagement that Hanmono really needed in this game. High Templar will be going down as well. Not much here for Geralt. But with a good enough surround and with good enough purification Novas, he might be able to get something done. Good pick off on that tank. That's a lot of Archons. And I'm not sure if Hanmono really has enough to deal with all of them. He has some ghosts. MPs do go down. Is that going to be enough? There's still one storm remaining, but it mostly storms Marauders. Hamono still has a larger army, but a lot of his army right now, a lot of his supply, is based in Medivacs, and Medivacs can't fight. Hamono forced to pick up, go back home. Geralt has held. Oh, and he could take out a fifth base, and he could take out the space too. I reflective, reflexively said 5th base because that's you know, the base count that we're assuming at this stage of the game, but no, that's actually the 4th base of Hanmono. Was the 4th base of Hanmono 
as it goes down. <laughs> Pardon me. Just uh, something primal triggered when I saw that fourth base get taken out here. I just wanted to retreat. I just wanted to retreat, but Geralt had other plans. You want to retreat? Well, I'll retreat you underground. As Geralt now has completely outscaled Han Mono. He has held long enough, he has mined long enough, he has mined large amounts of minerals and gas enough that now he can really start to, uh, he can really start to take the fight to Han Mono. He doesn't need to be worried too much, he doesn't need to do the stance back and forth of, oh no, but you have all of these tanks. Well, you have one tank and I'm just going to take it out with my Archons. GG's called and Geralt is going to be tying up our series sideways one to one. Very nicely done here. GG. Very, very nicely done here by Geralt. Just completely in control of the... Well, yeah, I would say completely in control in this game. As soon as he was able to get his couple of adepts into the main base of Honmono, it felt like he immediately knew, this is what I have to do. This is what Hanmono is going to do. He's going to try to go across the map with tanks and with uh, marines. I need to try to slow them down as much as I can with my stalkers while I get uh, while I get some um, while I get some colossus back home. And after that, it was really just a matter of expanding and containing uh, Ger of Geralt expanding and also containing Hanmono. Oh, Kuro would like to uh, would like me to point out that as a bit of fun fact, we had no no shows today. Very highly, uh, very mature shows. Very are. So, uh. Thank you, all of our players. Is I think what uh, is I think what Kuro wanted me, the direction Kuro wanted me to go in, of uh, having no players forfeit. We all appreciate it. Uh, admins appreciate it. Uh, viewers appreciate it. Casters appreciate it. And it also means that everyone's going to be eligible for the raffle today. Every player is going to be eligible for the raffle today, including. Our players here spawning on El Kione in the top right hand corner of the map, spawning all the way in the top right. We of course have our blue Protoss player coming out from the land of Poland. He is of course going to be representing Psy Storm Gaming, PSG. We have Gerald. And of course, over here in the bottom left hand corner map, but also being very cheeky, we're an SCV in the top. Top. We have our red Terran player coming out from the land of Japan, representing the land of Korea as well. And also his team, Hyper One. We have Hon Mono. Here we go. Hamono realized, you know what my problem was that last game? I didn't proxy. I have a 100% win rate today against Geralt when I proxy. So he's going to proxy once more. He also had a 0% win rate against Geralt today when he didn't proxy. So uh, that's math. That's math. Once again, going for the tech lab. Once again, going for Marauders by the looks of things. Geralt was a lot quicker to scout this game, and he also sees that it's a Marine first, so yeah, he's going straight for that proxy location. He knew 100% that what was coming his way. And now he has a little bit more time uh, compared to game number one. To be able to prepare a defense against this, he is going to be prioritizing that robo facility 
which is a good choice. Uh, Immortals are absolutely fantastic at holding in its Marauders. So want to be careful, just want to make sure that uh, you are able to kite against them. Immortals have slightly longer range than Marauders, so yeah, you want to be making use of that when, whenever you can. As the Marauders do now arrive, this out here, unfortunately, oh no, very slowly going to be uh, trying to back away from all of this concussive shells, man. It's so funny to see him uh, sell it, getting concussive shelled, but still being uh, still being healed by a shield battery. Very quick reaction from Geralt, gonna be able to cancel that bunker. Unfortunately, gonna be uh, actually not quite losing that adept. That adept gonna be useful, gonna be able to take out an SUV trying to build a bunker once again. Hamano is starting to consolidate his forces though. A concussive shell is tricky. Immortal's about to pop! And that should just about be the end of this proxy, uh, of this proxy here for Han Mano. Should be, but yeah, there we go. Immortal did take quite a little bit of a beating here. It's unfortunate for Han Mono that, um, a lot of his volleys from his Marauders were actually hitting the Immortal while Guardian Shell was active, so I wasn't quite able to make full use of his own forces. That Immortal will go down, but Geralt has held. Honmono is now forced to... <sighs> is now forced to macro. I felt a shiver as I, as I said that. Proxy gonna be going back home. Geralt now has the freedom to get into his own game to get his own tech. I say the proxy's gonna go back home, but uh, no, it's gonna remain a proxy. There we go. It looked like it was gonna land. For a quick little second, it looked like Hanmono was uh, planning to keep this proxy going, but knows better of it for now. And so, I didn't think we'd actually, I'd actually be saying this, but it looks like we're going to be seeing a normal game between these two. Very, very normal. Hanmono, or Geralt, going across the map with that immortal, just going to try to get some scouting done, try to see if he can delay any key tech, any building SUVs, or what have you. A little bit trickier with only one immortal compared to two, but hey, still a lot of there's still a lot of uh, damage that immortals do. Hellion Scout, Hellion Scout, Phoenix Scout, Haluk Phoenix Scout will not really catch much, but this is a nice little pick off here for Geralt. Going to be delaying tank production, which is very very key here. Especially against an aggressive player like Hanmono, who really likes to hit his timings. That barracks still didn't go all the way back home. Which is curious. But you know what? It might pay off for Hanmono. He is researching from this ninja rack, so there's no way his uh, upgrades could be delayed, right? That's the justification I'm going to be using. Feel free to use that one too, uh, Hanmono. Interesting uh, little quirk from Hanmono, though, is that he really likes to go Ravenless, at least in TVP, which is certainly a choice, to say the least. As Colossus production is now underway, Chargelets as well going to be coming down. Oh, I said Hamono likes to go Ravenless, and immediately he starts uh, grabbing a Raven, so 
I I'm, I'm on to you, Han Mono. Geralt is trying to be active with his immortals, trying to get whatever he can get done. Picks up a couple of free units. Doesn't even take any significant shield damage, certainly doesn't take any hull damage either. Still has a scout at this Ninja Rax, so yeah, good job by Hon Mono, is what I'll say. Sim is about to finish up, and with Stim, Hon Mono scans that fourth, fourth, third, should be going across the map right about now. Or not. This is interesting. Hamono just went from making zero ravens in a PV in a TVP to now really focusing hard on them. Double Raven coming out. Really wants to try to get the sable on this on this warp prism. Will be recalled out of there, however. I'm gonna once again scans, confirms that's where the base is at. Does another scan, will confirm, yep, that's a Colossus. That's actually two Colossus, so yeah, Double Raven actually a good choice here for Han Mono. If he decides to push out, there we go. I'd appreciate the boldness of Geralt here. Throwing out spotters right outside Han Mono's bases. Hmm. Okay, there we go. I was gonna say I don't like this. There we go. That's the Hamono I was waiting for. I was gonna say I don't like this. You know, Hamono was positioning his army outside his third. I was like, Hamono, you're not gonna, you're not gonna push, buddy. You're not uh, gonna pull the boys. But no, 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 no. Believe in the Hamono. He will give you what you want, which in this case is pulling all of the boys into a. Uh, into his opponent. Really good feedback stats. Both Ravens actually feedback, so no disables could be available here on those Colossus. Very, very key uh, pickoff here for Geralt. It'd be very, very difficult for Humbono to try to break into this. But he's got a lot of tanks, so he's gonna try. Brings a little bit in the meat grinder. Purification Nova will get popped. The entire mineral line worth of SCVs will go down. Gateway units go down, but we still have three Colossus. Two Archons and a Disruptor standing behind all of that. That was a disastrous push for Honmono. The backbone of Geralt's army still stands and it's looking to evolve into more than just a bone. Now that backbone is gonna bone. No, wait. <laughs> that... <laughs> no! The... <laughs> That's a real no-no show. <laughs> now... <laughs> now... The army of Geralt is gonna look to counterattack. There's no third. Hamono was super uber committed to to that push working, and it didn't work whatsoever. So uh, yeah, a little bit of repeat of game number two is afoot, but this time even more potent for Geralt. Tank goes down, and now there's nothing keeping this, nothing keeping anything else alive here for Hanmono either. GG is called, and Geralt. We'll be taking the series 2-1, to one, which means that he's going to be advancing to a Grand Finals, which will be a PvP. Very nicely done. Geralt, you can tell he was a little angry after how game number one uh, transpired. Getting a proxy marauder like that. Game number two, tightened it up. Game number three, tightened it up even more. Those were solid games coming out from Geralt, to say the least. It didn't really look like uh, he. It didn't really look like he was struggling too much in game two and three. Hamono, of course, doing. Uh, being the home mono that we know and love, uh, going for a little cheekier things like proxy marauders, going for timings where he pulls all of the boys as well. 
It's kind of hot mono that we've come to know and love, but unfortunately, Geralt was very quick to pick up on that and was very uh, quick and very accurate when it came to countering that style. And so with that, PvP. We're getting a couple of PvP finals in our tournaments these past couple of weeks, which is, of course, for those of us, for those of you in the chat who uh, missed out a little bit when uh, <clears throat> when Sparkling Tuna Cup and uh, Master Swan Open and Sea Duckling Open were in their heyday, is, uh, is nature, you know? Nature is starting to heal quite a little bit. Had a few PVZs as well, uh, as Light is reminding me in the past couple of weeks, but look in my mind, it's PvP City, mate. PvP City all the way. So with that, we ourselves are going to be hopping over to EU a little bit, but before that goes down, we have a little bit of a tradition on our hands here in uh, our tournaments. We will be getting predictions ready, obviously, so do not fret whatsoever. You will be able to wager your grapes, your channel points, into who you think is going to be winning this best of five. I will remind you all, best of five PvP Grand Finals. And before that, we also have a little bit of a raffle to get on the way here. So, I'll let... Uh, production set that up we have 18 players this week who have signed up for sparkling tuna cup and as a reminder this raffle is eligible to everyone who not only to every player who not only signed up for the tournament but also players who have played at least one full round or one full series in their run they can play one and then they can get knocked out but then they will still be eligible for this uh, uh, prize money raffle that we have. 18 players all signed up, or we had 18 players this week, and since we had no-no shows, all of them are going to be eligible. Who is going to be making out of here a little bit richer? We shall find out as... Where are my books? I got a new bookshelf. We got a drum roll ready. I just realized I didn't have a uh, what you call it open. Our winner is Eon coming down here. Going to be our winner of the raffle for this week. Our Costa Rican player, if I remember that correctly. Let's take a little look here and uh, take a little look to see where that uh, bracket went. Yep, did play out a full series against Knight Phoenix uh, earlier today. Did get knocked out, but because he was not a no-show, is eligible for that raffle. So enjoy it. Uh, enjoy it, Eon. Don't uh, spend it all in one place. Those, uh... That raffle... That can, that can take you pretty far over there. Hashtag rigged. Well, not rigged enough. I haven't won a raffle yet. But with that, while we were uh, doing our raffle, while we were doing our raffle, players did get their vetoes on the underway. And we are going to be jumping in here for our PVZ Grand Finals. Did I say PvP earlier on? I meant to say PVZ. But I think I said PvP. <laughs> what I meant was PVZ. Look. At certain points, you know, in certain regions, the Z is localized as P. But anyway, here we have it. Our PVZ Best of Five Grand Finals. Over here. On EU.
as we load on in. Predictions are now live as I say this. Uh, dear viewers, you do have th about three minutes to get those predictions locked on in. Wager how many, however many uh, channel points you wish to wager. To wager, unless you're in a region that uh, doesn't allow you to wager anything. And uh, pick who you believe will be the winner of this entire series. Not just the, not just game number one, not just game number two, not just game number three. The entire series overall. Here we go as we spawn into game number one of our best of three finals where we're here in the bottom right hand corner of the map spawning all the way in the bottom right hand corner we have of course a red protoss player feeling so free and unchained being able to play without high ping uh, i feel you Geralt. i feel you we have a red protoss player representing Sai storm gaming psg from the land of Poland, we have Geralt. And over here in the top left hand corner maps, holding all the way in the top left, we of course have our blue Zerg player coming down from the land of Belarus. We have our blue Zerg player, gonna be representing Platinum Heroes. We have Nikic. already faced a Protoss player in the semifinals, so potentially feeling uh, pretty warmed up for this matchup. Geralt, of course, quite a bit of a different player uh, compared to Nice. I mean, both of them pretty known for doing normal things, uh, especially compared to their contemporaries in their respective regions. You know, when I think of the Polish Protoss players and when I think of Insanity, I think of all of them, but uh, there's still there's still a little bit of a scale, you know. Uh, and Geralt is quite firmly not in the unhinged scale. Unless you get him mad, but even then, I was gonna say unless you get him mad like uh, Hamuno did, but even then, he did still do pretty normal. Uh, he did still go for pretty normal builds, he did still go for a pretty, uh, not too out of the ordinary uh, style. In the follow-up, he just yeah, tightened it up and made sure he was able to correct whatever his mistakes he initially made. As yeah, so for the meantime, our players are just, uh, you know, enjoying the fact that they're not uh, bound by 200 ping anymore. And they are... It's going to be building stuff. Uh, Geralt going to be opting for that Stargate opening. Saw this a lot from Nice, and in general, it is starting to become a lot more of the go-to for Protoss, it seems, in PvZ. Been seeing a lot of uh, cool stuff uh, with the Mothership, which will come down much, much later if we get to that point. Nikic forced to take the Unnatural Natural, but he will be getting three bases regardless. Ling will slip in and will confirm that that is an Oracle first coming out from Geralt. So not quite to the Void Ray into Oracle that we saw from Nice earlier today. And Nikic is taking this seriously. As we do see those spore crawlers being thrown down. L huge wave of links here just to apply some pressure onto Geralt while he still can. Not that many units on the ground, of course the Oracle will eventually run out of energy. I mean it's also on the other side of the map now, so yeah, Nikic can try to get something done while he has the opportunity. Something like delaying a third. 
Okay, I got some pylon. Not too bad. Nikic hasn't quite scouted that other third base uh, location just yet. Gonna try to see if he can. Once again, try to apply pressure on this natural base. The answer is not quite. As that third will go unpunished. It's a little bit of a late third base here for Geralt, but not the biggest of deals here for him. In the end, as long as you're even in base count against the Zerg player, you're winning. Even if uh, you're getting Banelings in your face and Lings are getting into your mineral line, you're winning. Just gotta believe. Now, so stopgap in the wall by getting that additional gateway. Nikic finally confirms he had a third base, but at this point, it's a little too late to really try to take it out. Meanwhile, we do see Nikic once again opting for a bit more of a Ling Bane heavy style. Which works out here as Geralt is opting for Blink. No forge just yet. Uh, no, he has a forge, but no plus one just yet here for. Geralt as Nikic gets into this mineral line and won't quite get much uh, probe damage, but I believe he was able to get a kill on that shield battery that was producing, so not too bad. And Nikic is right now just trying to do whatever he can to keep Geralt busy. He knows that he can't really afford to let uh, Geralt get too comfortable to continue to build his momentum and, uh, you know, really pick him apart with his uh, swarm toss, with a bit of a swarm toss style, but there's not really much he can really do to hammer these lings home just yet, or hammer them into Geralt's uh, bases. Just needs to try to, you know, continue to keep up the fight for map control and not surrender it entirely to Geralt. This fourth base is going to go down. Or not. As the Oracles and the follow-up Stalkers as well are going to be able to make short... short work of these links. They could continue to join up a little bit to a little supply blocked, which is unfortunate to say the least. Plus one is still a little bit of a ways off. But he can still try to get go for surrounds on these uh, stalkers, especially with Queen support. A lot of his links did get shaved off a little while earlier, though, and yeah, it looks like uh, Geralt has built up all the momentum he needed. We were all gearing up for a longer game. Nikic was gearing up for a longer game. Geralt was uh, planning his follow up after this. We were gearing up for a longer one, but. That's just the power, the power of the Blink Starters, man. If you're not able to stop them, they're going to Tsunami into your base. And so with that, Geralt takes a very quick and pretty solid game number one. Yeah, very nicely done. Things I imagine, though, are going to be a lot different in game number two, however, as we are going to be loading into quite a bit of a different map, to say the least. Here we go. Gearing up. And here we have it now, loading into Oceanborn, where we're here in the top left-hand corner map, spawning all the way in the top left-hand corner. We, of course, have our red Protoss player coming out from the land of Poland. 
is going to be representing Psy Storm Gaming PSG. We have Geralt. And over here in the bottom right hand corner of the map, spawning all the way in the bottom right, we of course have our blue Zerg player coming down from the land of Belarus. He's going to be representing Platinum Heroes. Give it up for Nikic. A very different map Oceanborn is uh, compared to Hot Lead. It's a little bit of a reminder for uh, those of you who were here earlier on for the semifinals or potentially missed the semifinals. This was the map when Nikic went for the German taxi against Nice. So, potentially something to consider here for him. Of course, part of the reason why uh, it worked out so well for Nikic in that game is because Nice did opt to go for a Glaive the Depth opening. Well, he opened with Vo a Void Ray and an Oracle, and then a switch, hot switch into Glaive Depths, and uh, yeah, unfortunately for Nice that game, Nikic was already gearing up and already getting his Roach Warren ready, was able to defend pretty handily against that, and yeah, had practically no resistance when he went for the counterattack. And Geralt, I don't really picture, at least in this meta, a player who uh, does go for Glaive Adepts too often. He is, he is a big fan of his Blink. And his Robo is the thing. But we shall keep our eyes peeled on that production tab as the Cybercore is about to finish up. Now is the time, Geralt, to make a bit of a tech selection. Pro gets into position and throws down a Stargate once more. Very, very commonplace here nowadays. I mean, it was always commonplace, but even more so nowadays. I'm trying to think of the last time uh, Stargate was the indisputable, like, go to opening here for PvZ. I want to say in 2021, when 4 base. Uh, Sky Toss was really was really meta for PvZ. Of course, Stargate openers uh, never really fell out of favor. It's just that you know other openers also got pretty good, or rather, Protoss players figured out how to utilize other openers. And you, know, you can't always be relying on the same build every game, especially against the same opponent in a best of series like this. Their players uh, did learn how to adapt against them. They want to keep them on their toes. And while a similar, similar style that we saw earlier uh, in this game from Nikic, going to be just trying to gonna build a handful of links and just try to apply pressure wherever he can while he uh, gets ready back at home he did confirm that Stargate so he is getting spores these oracles shouldn't be able to or this one oracle shouldn't be able to get too much done to oracle so that's a bit of a different story Nikic much quicker to catch the third base this time but Geralt also very quick to have some units here to defend. It's an interesting shield battery replacement, I gotta say. Right by the Reaper ramp. That, I imagine, might still be in range for a battery overcharge. Uh, just on the edge, I want to say. We'll find out. Meanwhile, Geralt Getting a Forge and Twilight Council, so once again, opting for that plus one blink style. Oracle do dip in, do catch a couple of drones, and will be able to escape with their lives. That doesn't get in the way of the assimilator, I have to imagine. Chill battery. Nikich, meanwhile, is opting for roaches, which is not at all what you want. Uh, gets plus one uh, 
against plus one Blink Stalkers. There might be a little bit of a timing here if uh, Nikic is playing to be aggressive with his roaches, where he can uh, go across the map and get some damage done before Geralt's able to amass the stalker count, but it's a bit of a tight window. Not neglecting plus one, though. I do appreciate that. It is a very wise move here from Nikic. Okay, see Geralt uh, being active on the map, but he doesn't have Blink ready just yet, so this could be disastrous. He really, really needs to be careful with how he engages with his army, and he really want, needs to make sure that he never gets caught on creep. Four more gateways being produced for a total of eight, so... Yeah, Geralt has just decided to go full on with the aggression this time. And a fourth base behind this, and wants to make sure that he is going to be active on the map as much as possible with uh, all of his gateway production. Link's moving across the map, and I think Nikic has a bit of a suspicion of what's coming his way. He sees all of these stalkers, and he knows, yeah, roaches are not to play. I just need to continue making lings and try to make my lings uh, useful. Try to get them to uh, pressure Nikic as much as I can. He is opting for Hydras behind us though, so a little bit of Hydraling Bane into Lurkers? That would be something I haven't seen in a while. But I don't think it's a bad idea. You do want all of these links to be able to deal with the plus one stalkers, of course, but as we can see, Geralt is working on a bit of a transition, already researching charge, and then what a link's gonna do. They can take out the zealots, but not as efficiently as Banelings can. Or even Hydra's can, that was a kill by the way, not a cancel on that fifth base. So very nicely done there by Geralt. Geralt still being active as much as he can while he macros up back home. Double Robe of Silly is on the way. Geralt is a Roach Boy. That was a very good blink on top of that to Queen, but unfortunately for Geralt, there were more Queens behind that with energy to transfuse. Didn't quite have enough Stalkers to really one-shot it. definitely a little odd uh, seeing the Protoss player be this active and this much of the aggressor in a PvZ, I gotta say, while Nick H as a Zerg player is just hanging back and defending until he can really amass a strong enough army to push out, but it looks like that time is just about now. So I was trying to do whatever they can get done. Ooh. Is that a charge? No, I think it was a snipe. Either way, a Baneling went down and didn't really connect with the army at all. Finally, that queen goes down right in the middle of laying down a creep tumor, and the creep tumor will get taken out as well, just to add insult to injury. I see some little uh, shrubbery here. The vision blocking shrubbery is what they call it. A couple of Banelings will connect, we'll be able to take out those flanking Zealots, but Nikic is starting to fight really far off of creep. Hydras with uh, Groove Spines, I believe, do outrange Stalkers by one. So Nikic really going to be able to apply a lot of pressure in this counterattack. Be very conservative with his Banelings, I like this. You really want to save those Banelings when you can really crash into into a major chunk of your Protoss opponent's army. Especially the Zealots. Fifth base of Geralt will go down, knocking both our players down to about even base counts. Uh, Nikic about to get a six right now. No, 
Oh, see a little bit of a skirmish, and Geralt starting to come in with a concave. A huge concave. As the Colossus do make it out of here and make very short work of the Banelings and the Lynx. Hydralis, they make uh, not very short work, but they don't, take, they don't take long to kill them either. This oh, six base will be killed and not cancelled once again, unfortunately, here for Nickage. We'll be holding the high ground, but... Yeah, Geralt doesn't feel any real need to push into the high ground. He knows that as long as he can contain Nikic here, he'll be sailing he'll be sailing pretty easy. As we get into our mid game. Failings not quite not quite crashing into anything. Just trying to crash into these Colossus, and they will be able to take one of them out, but only one, and that's the entirety of the Bailing count. Stalker is coming in from the side. Another Colossus coming in from the flank. Will get taken out by Ling in the end. So some very expensive losses for Geralt, but not a very efficient trade from Nickage. To say the least, uh, stop. third Colossus will go down. I think that should just about even things up here when it comes to the efficiency of the trade. But behind all this... Cheeky little zealot run by also kills his fifth base, and so now Nikic is down to four bases. He is down one base up against his Protoss opponent in Geralt, and that is terrifying. It is never the position you want to be in as a Zerg player. Geralt is going to have to lick his wounds. It's going to take quite a while and quite a lot him to really recoup his losses from earlier, but because he was able to deal so much damage to Nikic's economy, he's got that time. Because he was able to force Nikic to trade inefficiently, he's got time to rebuild. He's got time to remax. He's got time to remake a very high-tech army. Is it going to be enough against the Lurks? It's a major question. Has Geralt spotted the Lurker as well? He has now. So he knows he's going to have to take them very, very seriously. He knows he's going to have to respect them. See Nikic trying to get rid of some of his the units that he doesn't really need at this point that aren't going to be too useful for him. This lone Colossus so exposed will get taken out. And Geralt trying to come in for the flank just doesn't pay off. Geralt, uh, Nikic has a high ground. It's going to be very tough for Geralt to reclaim it. We start to move back up, but into the blob of Zerg. Third base goes down, and that was worth it here for Nikic. He needed to do something to try to even things out. A whole lot of Bailings do crash into pylons. Forces a recall here from Geralt, and yeah, he will be able to clean this up. So Geralt still technically gonna be up one base against Nikic. Lost even more of his Colossus. I'm curious to see. He has lost four Colossus so far oh, throughout the course of this game, which is expensive to say the least. He is starting to diversify his sources of AoE, his channels of AoE, however, as oof, that fifth base will go down. And now, Nikic uh, just about evens out when it, comes to the, when it comes to the economy. In fact, coming up pretty far ahead when it comes to the mineral mining. As Geralt has been disrupted numerous times when it comes to uh, his fresh bases and when it comes to his own mineral mining. Nikic now feeling pretty comfortable as this game continues. I mean, he's the first player to max out. Geralt still struggling a little bit in that regard. And we're really starting to see him uh, get into... We're really starting to see him get into uh, the late game that he is comfortable with. Oh, those are some juicy purification novas. Taking out a huge chunk of those lurkers and a decent handful of uh, hydras as well. 
Get a couple more Novas like that, and Geralt can really start to turn the tides here against this late-game Zerogami. Little skirmish is going on as both players are trying to get some run buys uh, at about the same location. That's what I need to witness. Yeah, we're really starting to push in. One queen will go down, but he knows better than to overstay his welcome. He hasn't seen the army yet, so he knows better safe than to be sorry. Better back away. Off of creep while I can. Geralt still has a little bit of a bank, still gonna be working on his uh, ultras, those key ultras to try to take out squishy units in the middle of the death wall. While his vipers suck up as much energy as they can. We're, I was talking about uh, getting a couple of key purification overs here for Geralt, but you know, a handful of well-placed yoinks will pretty much render Geralt's army inert. It's all about the spellcasters, it's all about who the fastest shot in the west is. Or at least the fastest shot in Oceanborn. That's a good yoink. But, it is only gonna be one for now. Nikkei's gonna be setting up here, huge storms will connect on most of the Hydras and just about all of the Lurkers, while well, the Lurkers don't actually die to the storms, a lot of them do get very softened up. A lot of body blocking happening as well as uh, Nikkei tries to retreat. You know, you see a lot of High Templar going out to those Banelings, but the Immortals still stand strong. Those Zealots are still being very annoying. Here comes a huge concave for Garel, and this should just about be all she wrote. That was a good yoink, but there was no army to really follow that up. GG, Geralt will be taking game number two. Wow, what a master of positioning here. GG, very nicely done. I'm honestly still in a little bit of awe that while Nikic and Geralt both looked like they had pretty comparable armies to each other, I feel like Geralt, it almost feels like Geralt just was thinking a step or two ahead of Nikic here when it came to, you know, the actual engagements and uh, where he wants to fight, how he wants to position his armies, how best to really split Nikic's focus so he can get the most out of his uh, Colossus volleys, his storms, his... Yeah, everything that goes on in a fight. GG, very, very nicely done here. With that, Geralt is now on match point. One more win for uh, Geralt, and he's going to be our new Sparkling Tuna. All comes down to this. It all comes down to this. It looks like uh, Nikic going to be requesting a quick little break here before we get into this. Can't say I blame him too much. Uh, has been a bit of a longer tournament uh, that we've had, so... And especially after... And especially when you are down 0-2 uh, in a series like this, it can definitely help a lot to uh, take a little bit of a step back and try to reflect on what went wrong, how to keep how you want to uh, approach this series moving forward. Maybe even just get water, go to the bathroom, splash some water on your face, uh, stretch, do a couple of jumping jacks, do a couple of squats, you know, get that brain moving, get that blood flowing, get that body moving, get that blood flowing, get that brain thinking. That's the three steps. And it's the three steps to uh, to anything, really. So we're, yeah, more than willing to oblige that. In the meantime, this will also be a pretty good opportunity for you, uh, our viewers, to go get some nuts, as Light is uh, yeah, telling me. It's a very good idea. Nuts. Put them in your mouth. A very good snack. Very uh, healthy snack and a uh, good source of energy going forward uh, throughout the rest of your day as well. That was nuts. Good for when you boned. Anyway, Nikic is out here, so we're going to be getting ready for game number three. Potentially the final game of the evening. Hopefully not, though. 
as we load into Golden Aura. Tall comes down. Golden Aura, a map that, uh, when you look at it from above, looks a little bit like a sentry. Or a probe, depending. Or an omelet. It's all about perspective. Anyway, here we are now on Golden Aura for game number three of our best of five grand finals here. We're in the top left of corner map, swanning all the way in the top left. We have our red Protoss player coming down from the land of Poland, representing Psy Storm Gaming PSG. On match point in our grand finals, we have Geralt. And over here in the top bottom right hand corner of the map, spawning all the way in the bottom right, we have our blue Zerg player coming out from the land of Belarus. We have representing Platinum Heroes, currently down 0 2 in this best of five grand finals. Send them your energy, viewers. If you want a longer series on our hands, we have Nikich. Or Nikich. No, there's no H after the K, so it's not Nikich. It's Nikich. Or Nikich. Or Nikik? I'm not entirely sure how the, uh... How... It works, you know? It's not quite a chess. Similarly with, uh, Geralt, you know? It could be Gerald. It could be Geralt. It could be Geralt. So long as it's not, uh, Geralt. As some people, uh... And by some people, I literally mean the character's voice actor <laughs> tends to pronounce it. I might be I might be misremembering that, though. It's been a long time since I played a Witcher game. Henry Cavill? I actually haven't seen the Witcher series, so I'm also not sure how, uh, how he pronounces, uh... Gerald. A oh, Geralt. As long as it's not Geralt. Which actually, now that I think about it, makes sense uh, phonetically. But that's exactly why I don't like it. Another force unnatural natural here for Nikik. Has the probe of uh, Geralt. Now I'm saying it. Wait, what did I say earlier? Wait, no. For Gerald, uh, we'll help him out a little bit uh, later down the line when it comes to harassing Nikic. He is going for the Stargate once again. Makes a lot of sense. If it ain't broke, no need to break it. Not yet, anyway. I am very shocked and surprised that these two links managed to slip into the main base. Will. Confirmed the Stargate once again. I'm even more shocked that they were able to take out one, potentially two. No, just one probe so far. Oracle opening coming out from Geralt. And it looks like we're going to be seeing something very, very similar to how our previous two games uh, have transpired. I'm being informed by Mr. Peanut in the chat right now that we shouldn't eat nuts. You know what? I'm going to roast them. And then I'm going to swallow them without chewing. Wait. That doesn't... <laughs> I gotta crush him up, and I'm gonna put him on ice cream as Nikic very well prepared against this oracle opening. Very good placement of his, um, of his queens. Little bit of a uh, creep bridge missing, but still shouldn't be taking too much damage here. A couple of adepts trying to sneak in, and it will be distracting uh, Nikic quite a bit. I mean, that oracle already got three kills, and now these adepts are getting, okay, only two more. So, nice little bit of damage here 
for Geralt. Both of his oracles are alive. I say both of his oracles because, yes, he had two oracles and now a third is on the way. So, yeah, quite a bit of a different opening here for Geralt. Uh, still wants to go into a bit more of a gateway focus style and I imagine it's still going to be uh, plus one Blink Stalkers coming out from him. But a little bit more committed to his Oracle uh, harass. Oh, I say harass, but there are lots of things that Oracles can do. They can reveal. They can uh, give you high ground vision. They can allow you to take out an Overlord with only Stalkers. And they can Sazus Ward. They can Disco Ball. Be a Disco Ball for your Rave if you left it at home. The world's your limit when you have oracles. They can reveal tours on the map, like so. Fortunately, not quite enough of a follow-up here for Geralt. I mean, he's going to be able to clear up a couple of these tumors, but not quite able to um, go all the way on home. Geralt just once again being very active with his units. He has to be very careful though. Thankfully for Geralt, he is only, you know, keep it to the edges of the creep. He's not uh, diving deep in. Blink is still quite a ways off for him, so he does need to be careful with his creep clearing uh, patrol. Very good wall offs here with gateways coming out from Geralt. Gonna be making sure that his fourth base only has one entry point, really. Well, this is all going on, Nikic can try to harass with his Lings, doesn't have much at home to defend, but he doesn't need that much at home to defend, it's a pretty small force, all things considered on the map here for Geralt. Forces a cancel in that fourth base, which is a pretty big delay. As Nikic gets ready for something very different compared to uh, what we saw earlier in the series. That is, in fact, a Spire. That's about to finish up. Eleven mutas already popped instantly. He was saving that gas. He was saving that larva. And he was... And now he's looking to do something a little bit insane. It's questionable to go muta heavy in your main army composition when your opponent is uh, a bit more stalker heavy, but... 12 mutas? I mean, they can make short work of middle lines. Definitely a little worried uh, of potential overcommitment, but I suppose that's what these uh, that's what these lings on the ground are for, right? You get the lings to take care of the stalkers, or to boost up these stalkers, and then you have the mutas to really just clean them up. Bonus. A little bit of an advantage you have with going mutas. You also don't trigger the uh, stasis wards with them. So that was only a handful of links that was caught in that. Nikic now has reclaimed map control and he's looking to make use of it. Rebuilding that fourth base, getting a fifth base behind all of this as well. Geralt on four bases, which is not bad for the Protoss player in PvZ, but not quite the massive advantage he was hoping to get when he, uh, when he opted for this style. He does need to switch gears quite a bit, so working on Phoenix production, uh, I imagine once Charge finishes up, we're also going to be seeing a Twilight Council get thrown down. Twilight Council? No, uh, Templar Archives get thrown down. As Nikic is getting map control with his Mutas, but not quite going to be able to really break into a base or really harass a mineral line, not when, you know, it's this defendant. Geralt even tried to catch them on the retreat! Ooh! But does open himself up a little bit too much to these links on the ground. He's forced to recall, and he's going to be losing a number of his stalkers here. Failing to bust on through, and is there enough here for Geralt to defend? And the answer is yes! 
but his defenses are starting to scatter a little bit. He's dealt with the links, which is the first step. Now he only needs to worry about the Mutilists, which are starting to back off a little bit. Yeah, really good uh, fortifications for Geralt on that third base in particular, because Mutilists weren't able to get any economic damage done. In fact, none of these units were able to really get any economic damage done. Geralt on roughly even worker supply on four bases versus the five of Nickage. So still looking pretty good. He's trans starting to transition now, getting his fleet beacon. As here we go, Nickage commits. He finds a little bit of an opening. He finds a little bit of a kink in Geralt's armor, and he will be wiping out this entire mineral line. Geralt was even on the uh, on the worker supply. Now not so much. He does have a pretty hefty ground army though that uh, get, that Nickage does need to respect. Starter's starting to bunch up a little bit though, and that's definitely de definitely very good for these mutas. They do want to get their glaives. All of the stalkers will fall, and that's all she wrote. GG is called Nickage. Gonna be fighting back really hard with these mutas. We'll be taking game number three. So we will be having not a completely once no three O's in this grand finals. We're going to be getting game four. Nicely done. Yeah. Really good, uh... Real good choice of going for a Muta heavy style here from Nickage. I was having a couple of my, I was having a couple of doubts myself, but uh, yeah, I guess at, there, there's a little bit of a tendency to maybe overestimate the power of the Stalkers. I mean, I think I definitely overestimated the Stalkers. Really do want to be uh, careful against those Mutas. Actually, no. The real reason why those videos worked. Demi's in chat. That's the real reason. <laughs> Nikic was getting that uh, little passive boost from Demi watching uh, Muta play. That's uh, my tip to any Zerg players who are watching. You want to get good with Mutas? Have Demi watching. You have no choice but to get good with Mutas at that point. Alright, our lobby has been made, as you can hear the boops in the background. We're going to be getting into game number four. On a map we haven't really seen too much of so far in this evening. A lot of Sight Delta, a lot of Oceanborn. A couple of, Al uh, of Alkyones, but... Uh, Not too many of them. Regardless, though, here we are now on El Kione. We're here in the bottom left -hand corner map, spawning all the way in the bottom left. We, of course, have our red Protoss player coming out from the land of Bolan. Going to be representing Psy Storm Gaming PSG. Currently up one in the series. He is on match point. We have Gerald. And over here in the top right-hand corner map, spawning all the way in the top right, we of course have our blue Zerg player coming out from the land of Belarus. He is of course going to be representing his team, Platinum Heroes. Down, oh, down one in this best of five series, but fighting back really hard in that last game. And now, being very cheeky in game number four, we have Nikic. That's a gold base, first. That's something that Geralt uh, is going to have to scout sooner rather than later. He sees the spawning pool being thrown down only now. He sees the gas geyser being taken. He doesn't see a second hatchery yet. 
couple of, uh, at this point, a couple of alarm bells, uh, should be starting to ring in his head. As Geralt gonna continue to be as annoying as possible. He sees the drone transfer. He, he, he I'm sure he knows at this point. Now, he hasn't confirmed it, but I'm sure he knows what's going on. Question is, how will he prepare against it? There's a lot, a lot of options when the Zerg player does take the gold base like this. It could be a little bit of an earlier roach aggression, or it could just be a a very greedy high tech or, or tech a very greedy tech rush uh, come down later on the line. Either way, once again. Very important for Geralt to uh, be able to scout this and prepare. So far, he is getting that Twilight Council, which I'm liking quite a lot. You know, go if he goes for a bit more of a glaive to that build, he can really punish this greed that Nickage is going for. Will scout, will confirm. Yep, that's a gold base. I need to do whatever I can to uh, disrupt your mining from this base and really mess up your economy. Robo Bay gonna be, or Robo Facility gonna be the other option here. Geralt poking in, trying to scout for any tech, trying to, if possible, pick off a, a drone or two. It's only one adept for the time being, but yo, that one adept, kill the drone, and it forced two more to, uh, to morph into spore crawlers, which were subsequently cancelled. Dark Shrine on the way! Hello! I was worried. I was really worried here for Geralt when I saw nothing being researched in the Twilight Council, when I saw only a single uh, gateway and only a second gateway to follow this up. But there we go. That is definitely a way to disrupt your opponent's economy when they go for a gold base. Nickage is getting Spore Crawlers though, so he will have detection. Is getting a roach run behind us as well. DTs can absolutely still do a ton of damage, even if they are detected. If Gerald is luck fortunate enough to find an opening, he can of course try to focus down that spore crawler. And you know, at this point, Nikic really won't have much of a won't really have much uh, to defend if he if his spore crawlers do get taken out. He is still on ha still on hatch tech, which is. Yeah, a little bit, uh, a little bit of a noof, to say the least. Dark Shrine not done just yet, so Geralt just gonna be poking in with shades, just gonna be poking in to confirm what, um, the defense is looking like. Oh! Nickage being very, very quick, or very, very active with his lings, will catch these DTs before they finish morphing. This is gonna give Nickage quite a bit of time to try to, uh, you know, body block that spore crawler or really just try to meet these really just try to meet these DTs wherever he has detection. That's too shaded and they are able to get a couple of drones. Not too many though. Geralt thinks about it and he's gonna go for it. Or at the very least he's gonna try to uh, split up his DTs. Or not. Let's see, is there an opening for that spore crawler? DT's going back and forth a little bit. There's no army here. Only these uh, two queens. So even with the detection, it's gonna be rough for Nickin to try to hold against these. Beautiful force fields on the ramp. Every single one of these uh Every single one of these drones is not going to have an exit, but hold on, here comes the Roach Armada. As well, Nickage doesn't have anything home to defend, neither does Geralt. Time 4 is going to go down, Hive is going to go down. And we do get a recall back home. There is detection here for Nickage. He does have this uh, Overseer in position. Very quick, though, to morph these Archons. He needs something a little bit beefier 
than just uh, than just DTs to hold against this Roach counter aggression, and it looks like he's just about held. Thanks to a couple of boys, and thanks to these uh, and thanks to these zealots as well. Ling reinforcements just a little too late to the party, and they will be chased back home. All in all, I'd say Nikic got the better end of that trade. You know, he killed the he killed the lair. He was able to hold his own economy. He lost a couple of production buildings, but look at his army. It's still very, very potent, very, very beefy for this stage of PvC. Nice little juggling with that very weakened Archon as well. GG is called, and Geralt will be taking game number three, fighting cheekiness with cheekiness to be our Sparkling Tuna Cup champion, number 44. <laughs> I am incredibly, incredibly glad and uh, grateful that we were able to get our game on El Quixote here. I, I, I'm, I'm very appreciative of what as to what we just witnessed here. I really appreciate Nikic just having that uh, gall to sit, go for the gold base right off the bat, and you know, I really, I'm really liking uh, Geralt's response to that as well. To say, okay. If this is how we're going to play, this is how we're going to play. And just commit to the DTs like that. Very nicely done here by both of our players. Very interesting plan from uh, Nikic, but unfortunately didn't quite uh, work out the way he wanted it to go. So very good reaction from uh, Geralt is what I will say. GG, nicely done. Geralt is going to be our champion for Sparkling Tuna Cup number 44. Nikic is going to be our runner-up. Both of these players, both of our players, are going to be making it out of here with some prize money. So that is definitely going to be a little bit of a... That is, uh, yeah, just so it's going to be. Exclamation mark Macharino in the chat, by the way. If uh, you like what you saw and you like uh, how our players, how these players perform, then you think, you know what? They they could use a little bit more in that prize pool. Unfortunately, we do not have any codes uh, to redeem. But if you do feel if you are feeling generous, if you are feeling like uh, you want to crack open your wallet and uh, throw a couple of dollars their way, if we do cross the threshold, we will also be expanding our prize pool to include our semifinalists as well, Han Mono and Nice. So yeah, if you do like what you saw and you do think that these players could use a little bit more. Some exclamation mark Macharino in the chat is the way to go. That's what I will say. GG indeed. And so with that, we also had a lot of players signing up today. We had, again, 18 players in total for our signups, and every single one of them played out at least one series. So if you exclamation mark B in the chat and you took a little look at the bracket and thought, man, I wish I could have seen how some of these games went that I missed or some of these games that we weren't quite able to catch. You know, if you think, man... I really wanted to see how that uh, Gogo Joey versus Mio Micah match went, for instance, or that uh, Mixu versus Shameless match went. Some of these other uh, matches here. Exclamation mark Patreon in the chat will bring you to the Cranky Ducklings Patreon page. And again, aside from funding our tournaments and aside from uh, you know, allowing us to host more tournaments and get a bit of a larger prize pool for our players here, you too dear viewer, can have the opportunity to receive replay packs for uh, for the tournament, which will be distributed in exclamation mark Discord in the chat over in the uh, Cranky Ducklings Discord server. Again, only for subscribers of the Twitch channel or for Patreon backers will be able to uh, get those replays. If you too would like to uh, have your hand at you know, taking a look at what transpired, or you know maybe taking a stab at uh, casting yourself, or you know maybe you just want to study a specific player that was uh, that showed up today, that is how to do so. Speaking of which, though, 
Well, I was gonna transition into uh talking about a talking about subbing to uh, a church channel, but I think I inadvertently kind of sold it with the Patreon uh with the Patreon uh, what you call it segment. But you know what? Sub to Twitch can channel. You you get emotes. You get all the stuff from Patreon, but also some emotes. It's really either or. And so with that, I think that is just about going to be wrapping us up tonight for the Sparkling Tuna Cup number 44 tournament. We used to hold uh, very regularly in the past, but unfortunately had to put on hiatus for a little while. But now we're back. We're regular. It's going to be coming at you every single week now on Sundays. With that, uh, yeah, that's just <laughs> about going to be wrapping us up here for tonight. I am, of course, uh, I have, of course, been your second half caster, Yaku of the Zaku. So, exclamation mark, uh, Yaku, Yaku Zaku in the chat. If you want to know where else you can find me, mostly on Discord nowadays. If you are curious as to where to find me, uh, you can also exclamation mark light in the chat who has been handling all of the production tonight and has also been uh, casting for the first half of this tournament at the very least. Will uh, yeah, bring you to his socials. He's also on Discord, the Cranky Ducklings Discord server. He streams much more regularly. So that's over at twitch.tv uh, slash light underscore VIP. But other than the two of us, uh, feel free also to uh, just follow the Cranky Ducklings uh, channel. We will be live almost every day for uh, the next couple of weeks. As more and more uh, tournaments are... More and more... I was, I would say more and more online tournaments are going to be concluding. Stars Wars uh, in particular as well. But not to fret. Because the minute Stars War, The online segment of Stars Wars uh, wraps up. Yeah, so massive spring qualifiers are going to be coming underway. So it's going to be a lot of casting over here on the Cranky Ducklings channel. With that, uh, I think that uh, just about wraps us up here for tonight. We will see you in our next broadcast, which I believe is going to be in uh, soon. In soon, at most, about at most about uh, twelve hours from now. Soon, TM ish. We will see you. Bye.